good evening. Uh, welcome to your City Commission study session. Please turn off or silence all cell phones during the meeting. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. at midnight and available for viewing on YouTube and Facebook Live. This City Commission study session will be open to the public with the maximum capacity of 20 seats available for the public. And I see that we have quite a few people from the public here today, and I welcome you to the City Commission. Face coverings and social distancing are required to attend the meeting. And I'd like to say that um, this is a study session. This is an interaction and discussion between the staff and the City Commission on items that uh, need further study. Traditionally, we have not uh, allowed the public or permitted the public to come up and make comments during study session. Those public comment sessions are reserved for our regularly scheduled meeting, which are every other week, and our next one will be uh, next week. Um, we're going to start off. We have three agenda items today. Review of draft local mass requirement ordinance, a discussion of that particular item, presentation of 2019 audit, and City Commission, City Planning Commission Joint Session Comprehensive Plan. So we're going to begin with a review of the draft local mass requirement discussion, ordinance discussion, and I'll first turn it over to the City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commission. The City Commission <coughs> provided consensus at the June 14th study session to review a local face covering mask ordinance. The purpose was for the Commission to be prepared with all available tools in relation to mitigation of the spread of COVID-19. In directing staff to place the item on the agenda, the City Commission asked staff to prepare a local ordinance to review and establish and strengthen communications with the County Health Department and local health care providers to monitor changes um, in key indicators of threats to the community. I'm going to turn this back to the Commission in just a second, but I do want to go briefly through the ordinance just to tell you how it's structured. So this would be a local ordinance added to the city's code of ordinances. Specifically, this would be a new article to Chapter 22, which is our health and sanitation section, requiring individuals to wear masks or other face coverings in certain circumstances. The order mirrors um, a lot of the structure of the governor's executive order in the same way that other cities, such as Manhattan, Salina, and Wichita, have done with it uh, modified to fit into the format of a city ordinance. The first page is simply whereas clauses outlining uh, the issues related uh, to the pandemic um, and the considerations uh, to take into account. Then in the second page, we get into the actual chapter that would um, go into effect for the city's ordinance if the commission ever uh, chooses to take that action. Uh, chapter 22, just to go over uh, briefly, would be called face mask requirement, uh, as, as typical with any city charter uh, chapters. It starts with a list of definitions, def defining a mask or face covering, de defining a public space. Uh, the second section on that, on that first page of the chapters is exemptions. These are situational exemptions, and these again are uh, consistent with other cities who have enacted ordinances in the governor's executive order. That then goes the next page, page three of the four page uh, document is the list of exemptions and there are 11 for individuals. Those include age exemptions, medical condition exemptions, deaf or hard of hearing exemptions and so forth. All of that is included uh, in the packet tonight and in the draft ordinance. Finally, uh, the section for the ordinance as in any uh, ordinance of this type uh, does include the penalties and enforcement section. This was simply done as a placeholder. Any type of discussion about uh, fees or fee numbers would be done at the time that we actually considered an ordinance, as we would do with any ordinance. So uh, it does lay out first conviction, second conviction, third or subsequent conviction. Um, but as right now, those are placeholders, and those are actually the ones that were in place by the city of Manhattan. And then finally, the last section in the draft ordinance is the effective term of when, when something like this would become effective. So structurally, it's very similar to standard city ordinances, definitions, um, and then all the provisions of the ordinance, followed by penalties and effective term. So I have, uh, this was drafted by our city attorney, David Waters. 
uh, who works with a lot of uh, municipalities in the Kansas City area and is well plugged into the network of city attorneys throughout the state. So I'm confident in this document. David is on the line if you have specific questions as we go forward. But now I would turn it back over to the mayor and the commission. Okay. Um, as the mayor for the city of Leavenworth for the year 2020, uh, I will lead as far as a discussion of this particular item. Uh, once I'm finished with my remarks, I will move around the horn and let each commissioner weigh in if they have any particular comments on my remarks or any aspect of this particular agenda item. These are my remarks on the city commission reaching a consensus on July 14, 2020 to discuss a draft ordinance that would require people to wear masks in public areas in the city. A little background first. The subject came up last Tuesday, July 14th, at the end of our city commission meeting. The commission gave consensus for the city manager to present a draft of a face mask ordinance for review and discussion by the governing body. I discussed the issue again briefly on Wednesday, July 15th, during a Facebook Live town hall. I said, quote, I want to make sure that people understand that the intent is to have a discussion during that study session. I said that three possibilities could be discussed by commissioners. The first is to continue along our present course, which would maintain the status quo of the Leavenworth County Commissioners, voting to opt out of the Governor Kelly's executive order requiring people in Kansas to wear <clears throat> masks in public. The second is that commissioners could decide they want to take a vote on an ordinance at a future city commission regular meeting. And a third is for the commissioners to put the draft ordinance on the shelf and revisit it if things get dramatically worse. I said that commissioners were likely to have a discussion about how such an ordinance would be enforced, as well as the public reaction to the possibility of adopting an ordinance requiring the wearing of masks in public. I also noted that the timing of the discussion comes as schools prepare to open, although three weeks later than normal based on Governor Kelly's recent decision to delay the start of school year 2020-2021 until after Labor Day. Public feedback. In the last week, there has been a great deal of public feedback on whether the City Commission should consider adopting an ordinance to require people to wear masks in public. Public feedback has taken the form of emails and phone calls to commissioners and the difference of opinion on whether the government should require the wearing of masks in public revolves around the question of how best to balance public health and private liberty. As the mayor, I thank our citizens for their feedback and want to let you know I have listened to it and in some cases responded back to individuals via phone call or email. I did return all phone calls that I received. I think the same can be said of my fellow commissioners. Facts. The public health law in Kansas stipulates the following. The Secretary of Health and Environment shall exercise general supervision of the health of the people of the state. County commissioners act as county boards of health. Each county board shall appoint a licensed person to serve in advisory capacity and as local health officer. The Board of County Commissioners of each county shall have the power at any meeting to contract for the protection and promotion of the public health and welfare and to perform such other duties as are or may be prescribed by law. In other words, county commissioners, including the Leavenworth County Commission, have statutory authority to deal with issues of public health in the state of Kansas. The specific authority is not this specific authority is not granted to city governments across the state. Governor Kelly's executive order requiring masks went into effect on 3 July 2020. And on 2 July 2020, the Leavenworth County Commission issued Board Order 2020-3, opting out of the governor's order. The action by the county left any decision related to consideration of the impact of masks on overall public health to the city. During the city commissioner's regular meeting on July 14, 2020, the city attorney, Mr. David Waters, told commissioners they could use the city's home rule authority to adopt an ordinance requiring people to wear masks in public. Of note is that a handful of cities in Kansas have used their home rule authority 
to establish ordinances requiring people to wear masks in public. Some of these cities are Manhattan, Wichita, and Salina. I'm going to go over a few stats very quickly. Uh, be three points that I want to make about the current statistics or metrics in terms of the spreading of the virus in, in Leavenworth County. Leavenworth County statistics as of Monday, July 20th at 4 p.m. Confirmed positive cases are 1,285. 369 of those are community <clears throat> cases. 67 from the Grossman Center, 849 were uh, Lansing Correctional Facility inmates. This number of 1285 represents an increase of 59 cases, in this case all community-based, since a week ago yesterday, which would have been Monday, Monday the 13th of July. This equates to an average of 8.4 new cases per day. Okay, number of county residents tested equates to 9,541. That's this is as of this past yesterday, Monday. Total test rate per 1,000 people is 116.4 percent, which is an increase of 12.3 percent from a week ago yesterday, uh, which was Monday, the 13th of July. Three weeks ago, the testing rate was 87.8 percent, which means over the last three weeks. The testing rate within Leavenworth County has increased 28.6%. Total number of COVID-19 deaths in the county is seven. Three community residents and four Lansing Correctional Facility inmates, which has not changed for a long time, two months at least. According to Mr. Jamie Miller, Leavenworth County Public Health Officer, current positive cases range from very mild to asymptomatic which may account for no deaths over the last two months or so. Next category, effectiveness of masks. The only thing I will say at this point on the effectiveness of masks is that reputable leading scientific experts advocate for mask usage to reduce the spread of COVID-19 virus. What would enforcement look like if the city were to vote to adopt an ordinance requiring people to wear masks in public? The approach would be similar to what the city does in enforcing its code of ordinances relating to the safety, health, and welfare of citizens. Recent developments. Nationwide, and let me just say that in terms of that, that's different than um, it would be uh, if we were following at the county or the city was following the governor's um, uh, executive order. There, the uh, Attorney General, uh, Mr. Uh, Derek Schmidt, I think, right? Derek Schmidt. Schmidt. Derek Schmidt. Uh, has outlined that there would be civil penalties that would be have to be followed, and that's that's different than what I just described. So the enforceability within the city would be a little bit different if we were to adopt a a resolution, a an ordinance specifically uh, focused on the city in terms of requiring masks. Recent developments. Nationwide retailers like Walmart and Home Depot and pharmacy chains, Walgreens and CVS have in the last few days implemented policies requiring not only their employees but customers to wear a mask when coming into their stores. And the number of local businesses in Leavenworth requiring customers to wear a mask seems to be on the increase. The result of these developments is that the number of people in the city wearing masks in public is increasing and together with the most at risk in our community, staying at home except to take care of essential activities like grocery shopping, pharmacy pickups, and doctor visits, the trend line <clears throat> on the number of people coming back positive based on testing continues to fall. And today that percentage, according to Mr. Jamie Miller, who I talked to this morning, who's our public health officer for Leavenworth, County says that percentage is down to 5.4%. So what does the City Commission do now? At the conclusion of this evening's study session, the Commission will have done what it said it would do a week ago. That is, have a discussion on a draft ordinance that, if adopted, would require people in Leavenworth to wear masks in public. As we move forward, 
We, the Commission, will continue to evaluate all tools to mitigate the spread of the virus, including ramping up strategic communication efforts to strongly recommend people wear masks in public, as well as encouraging businesses who have not yet instituted their own mask wearing policy to do the same. Strategic communication should also highlight the continuing importance of social distancing, frequent hand washing, and the personal responsibility people have in quarantining themselves as they wait on the results of a COVID-19 test. And as the county public health officer and county commission are doing, the city commission and city manager should continue to monitor the county COVID-19 metrics, which are on the county's uh, Board of County Commissioners website. And if trends on positive tests cases, the severity of these cases and testing rates take a turn for the worse, then both commissioners, both commissions should analyze and discuss possible courses of action to turn things around. I think everything I've just mentioned is consistent with the overriding priority of the city commission, the city manager and the city staff since the onset of the COVID-19 health crisis in mid-March of this year. That is, we will do our very best to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of all Leavenworth citizens. This completes my remarks, and now I will turn to uh, our commissioners, and the first commissioner up is Commissioner Wilson. Any comments or feedback? Uh, yes, uh, just definitely uh, appreciate you taking time out to address the public uh, with your uh, information. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to thank uh, each citizen and business owner who rushed out to express his or her concern about this particular topic. No matter what decision you choose to make, there are gonna be people who agree and there's gonna be other individuals who disagree. I truly believe as one commissioner, each person has the right to make his or her own decision. I do encourage individuals to wear their mask and practice social distancing while in public, but I do not support mandating people to wear masks. And to those of you who support my decision, thank you, but those who disagree, I still respect you as a person and the decision that you have made. As a community, we must be careful not to allow a disagreement to divide us. And let us focus on the things that will unite us, and I truly believe God is the only way we're going to be able to get through this pandemic. I will continue to encourage and pray for our community as a whole, and thank you all once again for listening and expressing your concerns. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Leonhard? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Waters and Mr. Kramer, uh, for this draft on the local mass requirement ordinance. And thank all of you for being here, uh, for the citizens to reach out to me, uh, email, phone call. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, this is a lot of relevant information that I, as a city commissioner, um, it's going to help me to continue to evaluate the evolving of this COVID-19 pandemic and what role local government can play in promoting public health. Uh, I just uh, encourage people to be kind to each other. You know, you have different views. Everyone's trying to do the best thing. You know, it's funny because usually when you have uh, any kind of thing in history, uh, people try to come together as a whole. And for some reason, this virus that has no feeling at all for any of us, <laughs> doesn't care if we're rich, poor, you know, uh, what our political status is or anything, it's just really just ripping us apart. And uh, uh, that's what bothers me because um, as human beings, I mean, uh, especially in this city and county, there's, we are a lot of really good, strong people. And uh, I just uh, wish the best, and uh, that's all I have for now. But thank you for this. Thank you, Commissioner Leonhard. Commissioner Preisinger? Uh, as Commissioner Leonard, Commissioner Wilson, and Mayor Griswold said, I want to thank people for the reaching out to me. I probably received oh, approximately 200 emails, of which maybe 175 were copy and paste of the same thing on either side of the issue. There's uh, you know, a good 25 or 30 that had different views on both sides of the issue, and I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, there has been debate on it efficacy of the masks. Uh, I really don't think that's up for debate anymore. Uh, I could use an example, and maybe I'll do it right here. I brought a lighter. I'll go like this. I can blow it out. If I put this on, can't blow it out. 
is that going to cure you from COVID-19? No. But common sense will tell you, if I sneeze in here, if I'm asymptomatic, it's probably not going to go out as much. It still can go out, but it's not going to be the same as me talking to someone. So I think the efficacy of masks is, is really not up for debate. Even the president this afternoon kind of recommended that everyone wear a mask. All the medical professionals are saying the same. I'm just hoping the citizens can do the same. It's, it's not a political issue. It's a public health issue. I, uh, I do believe our surrounding counties, we, we might be an island here, our surrounding counties that most of us would normally go to, with, whether it be Platte County or Wyandotte County, the ones they have mask orders in, we don't. And I'm not making comments one way or another on that. Uh, I think we can all agree COVID-19 is for real. Uh, we have more cases in the United States. We've had more deaths than other countries. Uh, we have normally led the world in all kinds of uh, uh, worldwide emergencies, pandemics, uh, natural disasters. This one I think we're falling behind. We've obviously been banned from going to various countries in Europe, Bermuda, a few other places. And I think it's sad. And I just hope that we can get a control on this. Uh, there have been, has been discussion on unconstitutionality of this. Uh, and I know everyone can have their thoughts. I, for some reason, I don't think it's unconstitutional. If it was, someone would have brought a case to the Supreme Court or an appeals court sometime by now, and there would have been a ruling. There hasn't been any. So I, and I hope, I, I hope that it does, so it can be determined. But I can say it's unconstitutional. Someone else can say it's not. And that's just an opinion. Neither, none of us are on the Supreme Court that has to make the final decision. Uh, obviously, we're not going to make a decision tonight. Uh, at such time that we do make a decision that comes to a vote, I can guarantee you my votes can be based not by politics, but by rational thought. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bowder? Yes, I am. Uh, um, thank you for the uh, emails. I appreciate that. I responded to every single one of them. And some of them, uh, uh, some of them were cookie cutter, like, like uh, Commissioner Pricinger said, but they were many that weren't, that really felt like we should have a mandate, and several of them were businesses. And um, I would just be curious, before we make any kind of decision on this, how many, I mean, I'm really encouraged by the fact that businesses are coming out and requiring masks in their businesses, which they have a right to do. And um, uh, especially the big ones like Walmart and Home Depot. So um, I, I would like to maybe see the Chamber of Commerce do a survey of their businesses and see those who have open businesses who have, who have mask ordinances and what some of their thoughts are on this. Um, and, and I, you know, the, I, what I'm concerned about is seeing the numbers of um, our community that are going up. Before, it was just mostly the prisons. And in fact, we don't even know how many are at the VA. I know there are some at the VA but I don't know how many, and we don't know how many are at the port, but uh, as you all know, every, everything pretty much closed down as far as masks there. Um, Mayor, when you talked about the three mm -hmm. courses right. of action, mm -hmm. uh, my thought was, and this is why I asked the question, if we could have something in place so that if things do start to go south and we can't even open our schools because the numbers are so high or whatever, would the city, would the city be able to have the option of having a mandate? And that was why I asked that question. And that's why we're, I guess that's why I started the ball rolling, but we're here today. Um, my thought is um, I, I would like to have something in place, but not necessarily have a date on it. Have something that we could go to um, quickly, because if we needed to, I wouldn't want to have a long drawn out um, time period. You know, if, if things start going, getting, getting really bad and the community's spreading, you know, it is spreading. Um, I mean, I've been following the numbers every day for Lovemore County in the community and the city itself. And uh, um, it's closing in on us. I know more and more people now that have COVID, and that's kind of scary. Fortunately, I haven't been around them. But um, that is my thought. I think the third course of action, but that's my own, my own opinion. I'd like to see... Um, something that we have discussed that we are comfortable with. Uh, I think that the fines it talked about, $5, is like ridiculous. 
I think a warning for the first time would be better than having a $5 fine, but that's my own opinion on that. And that's something that's a detail, you know, that's a detail for later. Anyway, that's my, um, my comment on it. I'm a med tech. I am still registered with the American Society for Clinical Pathologies. I know that masks help. Um, I've known doctors who've worn masks their whole life. For those people who are telling me that masks are dangerous, I don't think the doctors that I've known would still be practicing at 80 and 90 years old if, they, if the masks were hurting them. So I, I think that's a dangerous thing. I, I saw a few of those come through the, other, the last couple of days of, of masks being dangerous. That's ridiculous. Anyway, so that's my comments. Okay. Mayor? Mr. Oh, Mayor. Yes. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, one of my concerns is the enforcement. Um, it, it does put our police force uh, to enforce this, puts them in a tough position. Uh, there are many things going on. If someone gets a call and saying so-and-so is out on the street without a mask, it, the police realistically aren't going to respond to that. Uh, you know, cases that can happen that have already happened in the country, if, say you're in a store that doesn't require masks, but more and more of the national chains are requiring them now. But if someone is wearing a mask and the other person isn't, and they say, hey, where's your mask? And this person calls the police and says, somebody's over here without a mask. I don't think the police are going to respond. Five minutes later, if those two people are tussling on the floor or in a wrestling match on the floor, and the police are probably going to have to respond. Probably both of them are going to go to jail or go to see the court. I hope it doesn't come to that. I am very proud that Walmart, uh, Dillon's, which is part of Kroger, uh, CVS, Home Depot, Walgreens, uh, the major chains are going with it, and without exception, except for the medical exceptions, of course. And we just let's just get this thing taken care of. It's not a political issue. It is a public health issue. And. I'm just pleading with people to consider it that and nothing else. Thank you. Um, with respect to what Commissioner Bowder said, and that was a, a potential or potential possibility or potential course of action. At this point, uh, as the mayor, I am not in favor of that. I mean, the staff has done their work. Um, if, in fact, we go forward and things get dramatically worse, um, certainly this work will not go, would not have been for naught, but I don't, at this particular point in time, want to put the official thing of putting a draft ordinance on the shelf, so to speak. And so that's me speaking. Uh, I respect Commissioner Bowder's uh, position on this, but that's me, and I want to go around and ask the other commissioners what, what they think very briefly. Commissioner Wilson? Yes, I don't support it. Just put it on the shelf. I don't understand. I was suggesting support, we don't put it on the shelf, that we don't have a draft plan on the shelf, that, oh. that you know, we've discussed it here. If we have to uh, discuss it in the future based on, you know, worsening uh, statistics, based on uh, a further spread of the disease, we could come back. And the work we've done wouldn't have been for naught. But I just, the, the, the actual putting of this um, particular draft uh, plan in, in the in the file, so to speak, or on the shelf is something that at this point I don't support. Okay, so currently we either support it or we don't support it. That's yeah, what I, what I what I so suggest that's not is the third that, option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I, nope. I think there's a clear third option that we you've seen it. Right. We oh, have okay. it. It's ready. I mean, if you go into the terminology of on the shelf or right, right. in a drawer or something yeah. like that, I mean, it's already created. So yeah. whether I yeah. wherever I put it. Yeah. So the third option is you've seen it, you know, and at this time, take no right. action. Yeah. Right. And that's really because I was okay. mentioning that we would stay with the status quo. We've seen it. We're not going to take any action. We've got the status quo of the opt-out order of the county commission, and, and that's what I meant to uh, convey. If I didn't and I wasn't yeah. clear, okay. that's clearly okay. what. And so are we good with that? or? Yeah. Mr. Uh, I, I agree that, as Mr. Kramer said, we've got this. So, mm -hmm. whatever, I mean, it's there. Right. If the time comes that we need to move on this, we don't have to have another study session. We can, in fact, uh, you know, handle it at a regular meeting or actually call an emergency meeting if that time comes. I'm not saying that time is here. But the work has been done. This thing is available. And uh, if we need to move on it, uh, it's here. We don't have to relitigate it, in my opinion. So we have something available that we can move on, right? Commissioner, and obviously we can't vote on anything tonight. Right. Right. Commissioner Leonhardt? Yeah, um, yeah, take no action at this time. Okay. Anything else? 
Uh, this completes the discussion of this particular agenda item. And um, we are going to go to the second one, which is the presentation of the 2019 audit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A little more audit. straightforward or dry information, but important <laughs> nonetheless. Am I going to turn it over to Mr. Uh, Kramer? Uh, yes, you will. Um, anybody who wants to stay and watch the audit of the planning commission, feel free. Um, the audit is on the website and the uh, comprehensive annual financial plan, and it'll be our city's auditor going through. So uh, we'll, we'll give you 30 seconds to uh, thank, you, thank you for coming. This is the hot topic right here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Yes, I think okay. We're yes, sorry, uh, <laughs> Mr. Keenan. We uh, cleared the room. Uh, now we are ready to uh, have the presentation of the audit. So I'll turn it over to our uh, audit firm. Sir? Uh, thank you very much. Good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Keenan. I'm with the accounting firm of Cochrane Head Dick and Company uh, to present the results of the uh, December 31, 2019 financial and compliance audit. On page two, <coughs> a little bit about Cochrane Head Vicking Company. Uh, we've been serving Kansas and Missouri since 1975. Uh, we have a peer review with an outside uh, CPA firm will come in and review our quality control standards. And we have been awarded the highest rating as a result of that review. Uh, we're a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, as well as the ICPA Governmental Audit Quality Center, uh, as well as other professional organizations. On page three, Pictures of the engagement team, myself, uh, Mr. Cochran, who the firm is named after. Uh, Mr. Brian Holson, and Andrew Brands uh, were the personnel that were on site uh, performing this engagement. We don't know where he's at. Your, uh, Mr. Keenan, your pages and our pages, Aren't for some reason, are not jiving. <laughs> Whatever page he's on will be up on the screen. Okay. Uh, well, we'll we'll okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Disregard. <laughs> annual financial report. I uh, should note that the city has been awarded the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for 25 consecutive years. And they're going to submit the 2019 report, uh, and it's believed that that will also meet the requirements of the GFOA program. Uh, also, the audit contains a single audit, uh, which is an audit of the city's Federal awards, there was one major program, uh, the Section House, Section 8 Housing Choice Vouchers Program. On the next page. Uh, our responsibilities as the auditors is to conduct our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards, as well as the Kansas Municipal Audit Accounting Guide, uh, governmental standards, and also the uniform guidance. Uh, the uniform guidance provides us uh, with the criteria needed to audit the city's federal awards. We're also responsible to plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable but not absolute assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatements. Uh, we also report on the city's internal controls over financial reporting, as well as compliance with laws and regulations. Uh, the Auditing Standards Board of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, the ICPA, recommend that we communicate these matters to the Governing Board. Uh, illegal acts, none came to our attention as a result of performing our audit procedures. Uh, there were no changes in significant accounting policies uh, followed by the city in 2019. Uh, we're pleased to report we had no difficulties or disagreements with management. We had full cooperation and access to all the city's books and records. Uh, 
A financial and compliant audit really addresses these three basic questions. Uh, the first question, are the financial statements free of material misstatement? Uh, our answer is we have issued an unmodified opinion that the financial statements are indeed fairly presented in all material respects, uh, sometimes referred to as a clean opinion. That's the highest opinion that we can uh, give on an entity's financial statements. Uh, the second question, are internal controls over financial reporting adequately designed and operating effectively? Uh, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal controls that we consider to be a material weakness. Uh, had we done so, we would be required to report those to the governing body. Uh, the third question, did the city comply in all material respects with finance-related laws and regulations? Uh, our response, in our opinion, the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, did indeed comply in all material respects with finance-related laws and regulations that govern the city's operations. Uh, other management letter comments include, uh, there's a number of future accounting pronouncements uh, that may impact the city's financial statements, uh, but due to COVID-19, the GASB issued a extension on the majority of these uh, for up to 12 months to 18 months. However, management is evaluating these future accounting pronouncements. It's not anticipated that any of those will have a significant uh, impact on the city's financial statements. And Dr. Yeah. Hedvig, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to serve as the auditors of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, City Manager Paul Kramer, uh, as well as Ruby and the whole finance uh, staff of the city, as well as others that assisted us during our engagement. Uh, very professional, and we enjoyed uh, working with them. This was our first year uh, of auditing the city, and I think it went uh, very well. Are there any questions that I might be able to uh, respond to? Sounds really good to me. Commissioner Mayor. Commissioner Freisinger. Uh, uh, Mr. Keenan, this is Commissioner Freisinger. Uh, I don't want anyone to interpret this question as I think that anything odd is happening. But I know this is your first year as auditing. In years past, when I've been mayor and commissioner, I've always received a call from the auditors uh, confidentially and say in your opinion is there anything that you know that you think is amiss and my answer has always been no uh, but I, I don't think that happened this year and I, I think that is something that should happen not that I feel that anything's amiss but uh, someone that's completely outside of the um, chain of command if you will of, of the internal workings I think it's just a another good double check that should happen and with any audit of a government agency. My thoughts. Uh, Once again, I do uh, not I, feel that there's anything hinky going on, but I, I didn't, did not get that question this year. Okay, I, I agree with you, and uh, we will make sure that that uh, doesn't happen again. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Keenan, where's the where's your firm located? Is the headquarters in Kansas City? Uh, we have uh, an office in uh, Briarcliff. Okay. Uh, and then an office in Overland Park. Okay. And we have some other offices in Mid Missouri. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners for Mr. Keenan? No, thank no. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, audit and uh, and your presentation of the audit results. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. I appreciate sure. it. Next uh, agenda item for our study session is City Commission slash Planning Commission joint session. Uh, comprehensive plan. Do we need to take a five-minute break or I think, a ten? I think it would probably be good to take five minutes to get okay. the room set up. It's going to be a long item, so okay. uh, go five-minute break. Sounds good. We'll take a five-minute administrative right break. <laughs>
really well. Okay, listen, we're going to get uh, going on this third agenda item, which is very, very important, and it is the City Commission slash Planning Commission Joint Session Comprehensive Plan, and I'll initially turn it over to Mr. Kramer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commission, and I'm going to turn this uh, item directly over to Julie Hurley, the Director of Planning and Community Development. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Um, as you're aware, we're in the middle of our comprehensive plan update, which will be um, focusing on uh, the next 10 years of uh, growth in Leavenworth. And so we've contracted with Shockey Consulting to facilitate uh, this update to the plan. And so tonight they are going to give a just an overview of where we're at, um, go through a few activities with you. We do have um, planning commissioners here as well. We've got um, Claude Wiedauer, who's Hi, in the audience, Hi, and then we have three planning commissioners oh, on uh, GoTo meeting as well. So they will be participating throughout this um, as we go through the activities. So I will actually go ahead and let Shelby Ferguson with Shockey Consulting come up. Okay. Um, and she and Sheila Shockey, who is on GoTo meeting, uh, will be taking us through uh, the activities for tonight. Okay. Come on up, Shelby. How are you doing? Good. How are you all Pretty doing? Good. Hello, Sheila. How are you? Hello. Pretty good. How are you doing? Well. Who are the other planning commissioners that are here? Yeah. yeah. Are they? Who are the other planning commissioners, Ms. Hurley? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Yeah. We have, I believe, Sherry Whitson, okay. um, Chris Murphy, and okay. Mike Burke. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, as Julie said, we're going to um, just walk through a few activities with you today. Um, this is our first uh, commissioner and planning commission uh, joint meeting. Um, we have been, to, the, to date, we've been um, doing lots of research and existing conditions um, of work behind the scenes, um, getting things ready to go out to the public also. Um, we do have a fo focus group that we have um, already met with twice. Um, we also, as, as you all are aware, we conducted our one-on-one um, -on -one interviews with each of the commissioners um, and then uh, followed those up with some online surveys. Um, so we're just working through finalizing some of the existing conditions and data that we've received and um, moving forward so that we can start to really get into the meat of the plan and go out to the public and really get an understanding of what um, what they're wanting to see for the, the community of Leavenworth and then also what you all would like to see. Um, our next steps uh, following this, we will be doing um, in-person, well, in-person engagement in the sense of we'll be putting items out into the community um, that will have less contact. Um, that is something that we're still looking at um, trying to do is reduce the amount of contact that we will be having um, just with COVID-19 currently. Uh, we will be putting out online surveys, um, engaging the community that way. And um, as we go through those items, uh, we'll start to develop our goals and um, objectives from that um, engagement. Uh, but tonight we're going to work with you on creating the vision statement and then also um, just kind of going over what we're seeing as national trends and the impacts that those will have um, on, on Leavenworth uh, specifically. And so I'll turn it over to Sheila, who is going to walk us through the vision statement. Uh, real, real quickly, yes. uh, Mr. Ted, are you controlling the screen? Or is there any way they can make the font a little bit larger? Well, that's what I'm looking over here. Yeah. Uh, if, and if you can. Taylor can. Okay, there we go. There we go. That helps. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. I'm not that Make it as big as you want. It's really big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Thank okay, you. good. That's good. Wow. Great. So. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. I am Sheila Shockey, and I'm very happy to be meeting with you tonight. Mm -hmm. We are going to, as Shelby said, sit, uh, take you through a few exercises. And um, the first thing that we're going to do, we sent out a questionnaire in advance of the meeting today to ask for your um, opinions in terms of some language that we could use for the vision statement. 
Now, what I did was I took the information that you provided and used the words just to kind of put something down on paper we could start with. And for all of you that love wordsmithing, we are going to do some wordsmithing tonight. And um, what we'd like to do is to come up with a vision statement that really uh, reflects the direction that you want the community to take. And the vision statement really is an inspirational um, uh, view of uh, where the city should be in 2030. And so I know a lot of things are unknown in terms of the future at this point, but what we want to do is to set that target and begin with the end in mind. We want to figure out where we're going so that all of our goals, objectives, and strategies can really walk us towards that vision statement. And so um, I'm going to just go ahead and read to you what I have. And then I'm going to show you a few of the words that um, there was a lot of, you guys were pretty consistent in terms of the words that you used to describe your community <laughs> in the future. So that was really cool. And, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read it um, as it, it is pretty big. So I'll go ahead and read it just a little bit at a time and then go to the next paragraph. There's three little sections, basically three sentences. So um, this again is what you would be thinking about. And if you closed your eyes and thought of your community in 2030, you would say, as the first city in Kansas, Leavenworth values its unique history and collectively works, to, that should be works, together to build an even more vibrant future. Our riverfront, historic downtown, connected safe neighborhoods, quality educational and job opportunities, well-maintained infrastructure, natural and cultural resources and active living, attract residents, innovative businesses and visitors. Our committed community welcomes all and celebrates the diversity of our people. So some of the words that we did here, um, I've kind of grouped those and I'll make this a little bit bigger also, if you'll hold on just a second. So I kind of grouped them into kind of descriptions about your people and places. I'll make that a little bit bigger and kind of go through some of those. So um, people, um, diversity, community spirit, and a can-do attitude. Uh, places, kind of a description of a modern-day Mayberry, a family-friendly, welcoming, medium-sized hometown with amenities that are valued by young people and families. Uh, a diverse population and all age groups and inclusive, and in all-inclusive, being a historic town and a destination for great, great unique food, arts, and entertainment. Um, welcoming to new residents. Uh, the city will be reinvented in the image of the citizens. Business and investment, endless possibilities, growth and development. There were quite a few that were just kind of growth and development discussion. Businesses and families, excellent quality of life, collective shared vision and commitment, excellent schools and hospitals, first class public library, public parks and sports and recreation programs for the youth. Community, cream of the crop, fantastic living, federal partnerships, safe and clean streets and neighborhoods. Public parks and facilities, diversified growth, diversified growth and job opportunities. Entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, retired military and young industrious people looking for good jobs. Everyone, history and future, families, infrastructure, public safety. Appearance and image and economic development jobs, families and opportunities, opportunities, families of all ages. Opportunities for entrepreneurs, nice neighborhoods, affordable homes, family friendly and welcoming our citizens, family welcoming dis destination. I'm glad that I lived there. Something that for everyone in the old, young and old, the hometown feel, safety, welcoming and healthy walkable communities, innovation and growth working together, the needs of all citizens, not just the select few. Oops, sorry, went too far there. Unique and inviting, unique experiences, unique museums, arts, restaurants, safety, diversity, progressive, pride in our community. Fiber businesses and great restaurants, that is where I want to be. Visitors, what a great place to live, River City. So those were some of the 
statements that were included in your responses. So you can see there's a lot of consistency there. So what I'd like to do is just get your um, feedback on this and see if there's any just general um, uh, discussion in terms of are we, are we capturing everything that we need to in the statement or are we missing anything? I have a question, Sheila. This is, uh, this is Mike. Um, in turn, are we, are we just working on one vision statement or are we working on a statement and sort of a longer paragraph or something that would kind of describe the envisioned future? What, what, is, what, is this, what, are, what are we driving for? One? Sure. So it can be, um, you know, a paragraph, a couple sentences. Um, so you don't have to cut it down to just one. It's not a tagline. It's more of a statement yeah, that if you read it, um, you have a real good sense of, you know, what direction you want to take your community in terms of the future. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any uh, feedback for Shockey as far as the vision? And you will not hurt my feelings if you want to change anything. This uh, is Claude Widow at the Planning Commission. I might have missed it, but did I see something there related to religion? Because at one time I know Mr. Commissioner Wilson is probably a good advocate of the power of we are. I one time I think I saw that we have like over 50 churches in Lemworth. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that we have a comment there about incredible opportunities for all different religions in this community. That's good. I might have missed that. If I did, I apologize. But religion. That is good. Okay. And Go ahead, diversity, Commissioner. Diversity of the people. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, I just said the issue with religion, though. We right. have so much religious opportunities here, whatever. Yeah. We We're do. so open with, with, with everything this community has with religion. Yes, sir. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think the maybe the term of art is faith-based. I mean, I believe okay. that yeah. this is... Yeah. Uh, agree. I mean, I think that right. would be a little bit better, but but I agree. We don't have 50, but I do think we have 27 yeah, churches. Faith-based right? is well, good. But, but, <laughs> uh, we have a lot of <laughs> I'm I, 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 only got we, we have a lot, and they're great, and they, yeah. they are an integral part of our community. That's important. Yes. Commissioner Bowder, did you have? No, I think okay. that's, very, that's very important, Mike. Uh, Commissioner Preisinger? Uh, there was something, this is Commissioner Preisinger, uh, about Mayberry. Was that in the vision statement, or was that just on the side note? Mm -hmm. That was just a, a comment that somebody made. Okay, right? okay, I good. I, even though I have fond memories of uh, Mayberry, I just don't. That's a long time ago. Uh, we're, we're not I, a Mayberry. It, look, I, I don't we're, think we're it should not be in a business statement. <laughs> but I, under, I understand that. But I, uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm trying to put the faith base R. Commissioner Wilson, any any uh, comments? No, that's any? good. That was great that he pointed right. that out. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, let me think. Uh, hmm. Commissioner Leonhardt, anything? Any? No, I, I uh, Commissioner Leonhardt. Yeah, I uh, I like everything up there. Of course, yeah, you want it to be probably a little bit more condensed, but yeah, yeah I always hear. Well, how, what a amazing, great fr yeah friendly community we are, mm -hmm. even from the military families that come and go and uh and the about the walkable community in that you know? I, yeah i think i think you've touched on everything that we think are strengths yeah, of the really. of the city and uh you know kind of leveraging our past and our history and what we're doing currently to you know project ourselves forward 10 or 15 years i think you've captured it pretty well some of the specifics um you know in terms of infrastructure and parks and recreation and um, other other items whether that is in the you know it could be but it also could be kind of a structure for some strategic objectives in uh, kind of functional areas that we would track over time at least that that's kind of what I what I what I see uh-huh but this is, is basic there anything you would add or strike from this um, list here kind of that gives the different uh aspects of the community I'll make that a little smaller I, I would not page. strike anything from there this is a vision that yeah. we're talking yeah. about right now really. it's not that yes. it's not the mission it's mission. The, this is the vision <laughs> you, you talked okay. about 2030 that's our vision yeah. and so it, it should be descriptive and I think that's very descriptive and I would keep everything in there and just to add to I think we do extremely well as a community uh, unifying, coming together. Uh, to, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. 
to yeah, support whatever unified. cause. Yeah. So uh, I would definitely recommend Unified. I'm <laughs> good with that. Unified or United. Yeah, United, Unified. United. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, man, we're a strong community. No matter what, we stand together uh, yeah. to address the issues together. So you come up with that. <laughs> if there's anything else I would add is that for some of us that have lived here a long time is that we work here we live here and it's a great place to retire That's oh, yeah. it. the yeah. villas that are being built I'm not just picking on any particular one builder who's doing that here in town but mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying this is a great place to retire because yeah. of how close you are to legends how close you are to resources the cost of living here the price of housing so I think that is something as, we, as people are getting sure. older I think this retirement issue is something we need to be aware of mm -hmm. to retire here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Commissioner Leonhard, I agree. Uh, you know, we are right close to uh, Zona Rosa, you know, North Kansas City or the Legends, and we're just hop, skip, and a jump from the mm -hmm. airport, mm -hmm. which is very convenient, too. I would definitely retire here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Retirement's <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> you got a long time. You got a long time. Do you want to put something about kind of the proximity um, draw, you know, is attractive to people? I, I think the aspect of um, uh, affordability or cost of living or and, and close to, you know, a major metro metropolitan area, I wouldn't be averse to that. I think that's one of the, I mean, one of the reasons that, uh, one of the reasons, not only, the only reason that, my wife and I and family decided after being in the military for such a long period that we wanted to retire in Leavenworth. So, I mean, that, that's how I would view that. Well, and, and we okay. focus on the international community as well. Yeah. We are, yeah. you know, yeah. if you compare ourselves with any other town in Kansas, we are international. You yeah, know, we're point. an international community here. And a, and a military community. Mm -hmm. And, and we had you had the you know the reference to the federal partners and you know we need to, we don't need to specify you know there's three major ones but that's pretty important it's been important in the past and I and I assume and hope it's going to be important in the future so that that's that's critical um, can I make one comment sure about where Sheila where you added faith-based um, uh -huh. I think that we may need a little bit of wordsmithing I just it's our committed faith-based community that makes it sound like right. the entire community yeah. is faith-based yeah. I think there needs to be something right. in there about a diversity of faith or right. something along those accepting okay. or something but I don't know that I would use that as right. a descriptor before the community correct I, I, okay. I agree thank you for that yeah. keep us on track keep us right <laughs> good point is this normally how you would come up with the vision statement? Yeah, it's it really is. That's good yeah. though. Yeah, it's it really pretty is. creative. Mm -hmm. Well, the, and the planning commission's done the done the, the hard work with Shakia. Yeah. I would assume anything you want to share with us, uh, Claude, as far as uh, anything that you haven't shared with us thus well, far. I think, yeah, I think the issue is openness, inclusiveness, yeah. sensitivity, awareness, and and just being proactive mm -hmm. to, for our future. That it's we need good. to look where we want to go. And put this all together with the roadmap. We, we want to put going up. We want to get on road. We want to have our resources yep. and talent going. Keep on that road. Yeah, is I think what our objective is. We haven't heard from our other planning commission members. Either. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we uh, go to the other planning commission members who are with us uh, remotely? Are they on the phone or? Uh, Mr. Mr. Burke. Is it Mike Burke? And Murphy. Mike. Burke. Chris Murphy. Yeah. Chris Murphy and yeah. Sherry Whitson. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, good. I, hey, Sheila, yeah, I, I typed in something. I think that first line, not being picky, uh -huh. uh, it should be as the first city of Kansas. I, okay. I, I'm yeah. in Kansas. That's good, though. It's good to be picky. Yeah. Who, who is this speaking? Chris Murphy. Okay, okay. Your, yeah, name, just, your name's not popping up. Anybody? Yeah, just identify yourself before yeah. you speak. We've yeah. had to follow that protocol for the last three months, so... That's good, Chris. No, I, I, that's good. That's the type of work that we want to try to get done here. So we can nitpick a little bit and, uh, you know. Okay, now we can see who's talking. Yeah. Okay, now no. now we got people up no, there. Mike's, gotcha. Mike's got his mic open. Okay. Hey, Mike. Sheila, this is Shelby. Just at the top line there, it was as the first city, the first, first city, city of. of oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, first city of Kansas. Thank you, Joe. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. 
as the first city of Kansas. I like that good as that first statement. And, and I think, do we need to uh, capitalize the, the F in first and the C in the city, or, or not? Not in this case. Not in this case? Okay. <laughs> okay. No. 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 She already okay. did it. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll go. I'll, I'll make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that first little paragraph. That's mm -hmm. good. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the, the riverfront, and I think that's maybe, you know, for, for some of the commissioners who've been on the commission longer than the three of us, the riverfront is really important, and I think it really came home to me last year when we had the Camp Leavenworth. In term, and my wife was, I, I don't know if we'd really been down there, but it was a beautiful venue, and it's really a strategic asset of the of the city, I think, and I'm glad that we, we have it up there um, as part of the vision. Small point, uh, middle of that paragraph, quality, educational, comma, and job opportunities. I don't think the comma, yeah, that. Education. So take the comma out. Yeah, right, because right. they're together, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It means two different things. And I think the fact that we've left it kind of general, quality, educational, I mean, we've got good, good sound public schools. We've got institutions of higher learning that are here. We've got the Pioneer Career Center, so I think that, that covers it in terms of being general in terms of quality education. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one, definitely one of our strengths. Mm -hmm. uh, one item for discussion, whether you, I mean, you could add ad nauseum, um, we have sort of informally adopted the we do government, we do government well. I think our riverfront, historic downtown, and federal partners of some kind. This vision statement will be what our federal partners read, and I think it's important that it's... yes. Right. So you, where would you put that? Uh, Riverfront, historic downtown, and then you could put it something like uh, federal government partners yeah. or something along right. those lines. Right. I mean, there is yes, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I agree. How about other? That's I think it's important. It's been important for decades, yes. if not. You know. I think that's a good spot for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. part of our community, so. You're like picking out different parts of our community. And that's definitely a big part. Um, close proximity to to major what? metropolitan area or close yeah, close proximity to uh, Kansas City or or, or just, yeah. What, what I mean, we have to explain what that is. Whether it be Kansas City or major metropolitan that's area. It's a major yeah. metropolitan area. Yeah, yeah. major yeah. metropolitan area. Hi, this is uh, Sherry Woodsy. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know. In my head, I keep reading this statement, and I don't know. Maybe you can fit it in somewhere. Like a hidden gem centrally located to a metropolitan city, to a larger metropolitan mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A hidden gem just always rings in my head when I think about Leavenworth. And I live in one of the historical parts of Leavenworth, and up and down our street, we always go, shh, don't tell anybody. This is like a hidden gem. Nobody, don't <laughs> tell anybody about Leavenworth. We love it. So I don't know. I just keep thinking hidden gem, centrally located, because one of the other pulls for me and my husband is the fact that it is close to the airport. And, you know, I have a career job where I have to fly out a lot. So the metropolitan city is a big pool for us. Yeah, it's so great. just my two cents. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's no, that's that's some really good feedback. Well, yeah, close to the airport. That is that is a big deal too. Yes. So something like that, and put it in there, and take it out of here. Yeah, I think we we may want to put yeah. uh, the air. I don't know. I think we we may need want to at least try it out in terms of the metro area, but also the airport. You know, the the international airport mm -hmm. um, because that is that is critical. Uh, the new, the new one's being built. I don't know when it's going to be services. done, but to close to the metro to metro services and I don't know if you, would you metro, say metro services. services. I don't know I don't what that like, is. I don't know metro services. I don't know. I think it's a huge pull for people in uh, corporate America okay. because they want to have easy access to come in and out of Kansas City and not have to drive another 45 minutes to their home. Yeah. So it's literally 15 minutes. That looks good. I think amenities sounds better than services. Well, that's right. Metro I services like makes services it sound more. Makes it good. Right. Yeah, the metro minute, minute. yes. And qualify airport put international. Yeah. Oh, yes. So it, 
Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. You could even go a step further and say new international since they're converting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Versus 2030. Okay, think, this is 2030. It won't be new anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And I think it would be wise if we add something in about our youth. Yeah. Because we definitely want to, yeah. you know, give them our. There was something about, about retirement, but families, I but I didn't, I yeah, didn't see anything specifically yeah. focused. Yeah. I think oh, there was something, though, with need. regard to the parks, I thought, too. Huh? I thought there was something in regard to the parks. Maybe that was in the lower ones that we were all. Do you, um, are you, I kind of have a trouble hearing, but um, uh, you're talking about kind of parks and... Um, something about so youth. Youth, do you want to say something about, since you talked about retirement Correct. and youth, do you want to say active living attract residents of all ages? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It's a whole lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to keep adding to, but yeah. And and active living, that's that's a little awkward, right? And active living attract residents. Of all ages. That's not, something's, I don't think that's we need to living. take out a couple of words or maybe put in a few words. Um, and I'm talking about from the end, active living attract residents of all ages, innovative businesses and visitors. The, the latter part of that's fine. It's just that third third sentence or third line from the from the bottom of that paragraph. Just seems it just. Okay. I'm reading it awkwardly, but that's just me. Um, you, could, you have anything? You could uh, kind of make it a separate set of sentence. Yeah, that's good. All's right. Yeah. Separate it. <laughs> that might be a good idea. <clears throat> no, but I would I would reinforce. I mean, yes, people of all ages and and the youth. Um, I, I think it's important to somehow get the idea of of, of a youth because the youth are the future of our community. They can, you know. So I I don't know. If somehow we could. Capture that in the uh, vision statement. I think it would be important. Okay. I got to thinking again. Uh, this is Sherry Woodson. Do we have anything about our national cemeteries in there, <laughs> or do we want to capture any of that? That's that's. I think that you have cultural resources and historic. So I don't know if you want to. Yeah, no. Keep it. Yeah, yeah, you keep it. It's, yeah. I don't think we specifically mention it, but I do. It's kind of, you know, the, we have, um, we do have some crown jewels within the community, and I think those are two of the crown jewels. I mean, we, I think we have, you know, at least a handful of between five and ten, but I, I'm not sure we need to maybe necessarily highlight it in the vision statement, but right. I definitely consider it, uh, consider those two cemeteries a real strength and very, uh, you know, something the community takes pride in. Okay, so that could be something that's in your goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Strategic objectives or goals or something like that. Uh, Commissioner Prizinger again, just a quick wordsmith. Uh, innovative businesses and visitors, no comma after businesses. Okay. I think the English teachers would tell you to <laughs> remove that. Don't comma. like the Oxford comma, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, most English teachers will tell you no. <laughs> So, um, did we hear from Mr. Burke? Was it, was it Mike Burke? Did we hear, do, do you have anything, uh, Mr. Burke? Uh, uh, hi, this is Mike Burke. Thanks for the opportunity. At this point, um, I don't want to be the Debbie Downer or the wet blanket, but that middle paragraph to me just goes on and on and on and on. And on. Okay. okay. We kind of think we might be losing our focus Yep. By trying to capture everything, everything. Yeah. that we wanted to capture in there. I, that's and some I'm good feedback. Right. I'm not saying one's wrong, but you know, we've all seen uh, vision statements for different organizations, yeah. and the ones that I sometimes remember are the ones that get right to the point. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. I agree. I, I don't disagree with you. In fact, I think I would, I, I don't know what to suggest right now, but I, I, I am concerned about that, and I think it's a good point. Anybody have some... Good ideas about that. Just well, if we, <laughs> it seems like it's all mixed up yeah. in there. If we could have different sections of the vision, where, you, where you we're talking about something here, you're kind of talking about hidden gem near the metro amenities and in international airport, and maybe a statement that kind of captures this yeah, quality of life. 
Yeah, because that's more specific. I think the first the first sentence of that particular paragraph is good. I yeah. mean, the rest of it is good, but it's kind of getting down there a little bit in the weeds for a vision statement, right? I mean, I, that's what I think, but that's just one commissioner, so. So we could have something that uh, these are maybe um, your list of kind of features that you have. Yeah. Right. It doesn't have to necessarily be in your It'll vision have to be statement. Listed. Right. Yeah. yeah probably but, not part of a you know a broader vision statement. What do you think if you are describing this um, in the elevator to someone? Yeah. How would you describe that um, these things that are listed here? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, elevator speech of what 30 45 seconds right that's, seconds. that's all yeah, you have what so. is your elevator speech about leavenworth if you're talking about these items here yeah like hold on we're gonna pull out a book <laughs> yeah it's hard to, to see it on there without seeing it down here and scratching out stuff yeah my elevator speech or my statement always is leavenworth is a great place to live work <laughs> invest and raise a family that's what mine is, but I don't know that everyone's That's in good. agreement, and that That's just good. kind of covers everything. Because it, yeah, cut and dry. Yeah, I think that um, uh, kind of the live work uh, that a lot of people have that. So one of the things I think is good to have an, a vision statement is to um, it has to be a little bit like uh, Mr. Burks was saying, catchy or rememberable, but also kind of unique. You right. want it to be All able right. to when you right. read it. You think yes, that's that is what it feels like to be here. Yeah, just go down a little bit. Let me see what the third. Not sure. to the yeah south of the, the highlighted part. Uh, Commissioner Wilson, you have something? No, I'm just saying I'd like the the, the, the first paragraph. Of, oh, you, yeah. the first paragraph's good. I think it's straight to it. Straight yeah, yeah. To the point. yeah. <clears throat> Can you go down to the? Is there a paragraph below this paragraph, um, Shelby? Yeah, this is the, oh, this here it is. is it, right? uh, welcome to all. That's good. The um, middle paragraph kind of talks about the features of the community yeah, or almost like the yeah, benefits. Right. It's almost a, a list, yeah. Yes. So what do you, what do you think? Um, I mean, it is more like a list, and I think it takes away from the other kind of broader, more powerful vision. But, right. I mean, can, can you suggest anything, either Shelby or... Or Sheila, in terms of what we might we want don't to lose do. these, we could use use these as strategies. You know, yeah, right, right, right. We keep those, but maybe not put them right here. Maybe I'm sorry. No, we're just saying I, maybe use them as kind of the framework or the you know the uh, the, the the feeder material for some strategic objectives for you know major yeah, functional areas. That's good. But, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we can kind of think about how we might put this. My thought was something to be. Something that would describe um, kind of the look and feel of the community in the second. So this yeah. is kind of about. Let's see. I'm I sorry, think that yeah. Else, if you could do that, because what we're trying um, to get at is the, is the look and feel. That's a that's a good term. Uh, yeah, if, if, if that could be um, if that could be done efficiently. What you value. Yeah. And then this this kind of starts to talk about the almost the benefits look and so this is kind of the location and the look and the feel. And then this is about your people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So no, something that we can kind of work on a little bit is a couple statements we can send back around to you all and get some feedback on kind of the how would we condense this into a description of kind of the look and the feel yeah. of the community. And, and um, I didn't see that, you know, I think we may have excised it out, but you know, just keep family, uh, keep family in mind. That may be something in terms of what you're talking about in terms of the look and feel. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think we may have kind of I maybe, maybe lost right that, but yeah, toward the end. and I don't know exactly yeah. where it goes, but families, yeah, like you yeah. could say it's folk, you know, we're focused on the quality of life for all those age groups, for all those cohorts. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, I just wrote a couple words. I mean, because I'm always really short, sure, point, but like history, family, community. Mm -hmm. Love more. <laughs> that's bam, bam. Maybe that's the tagline. That's a slogan. That's a good slogan. I think the biggest thing that stood out for me was I know all my neighbors. And I, I lived in Johnson County for 20 years. 
And then when I moved here, literally when my movie truck was pulling in and unloading, all my neighbors came over and introduced themselves. Mm -hmm. So friendly, neighborly, just yeah. like sticks with me. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's so, it's so endearing to know that I know my neighbors and they're like my close friends. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Johnson County for 20 years and didn't even know my neighbors. So I don't know how that can all be yeah. put in there about, you know, the climate of Leavenworth. You, mm -hmm. you know your neighbor. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. friendly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Very good. So that can kind of be the, we can work that in down here with the people. Mm -hmm. Kind of in this section. Because I travel extensively, and how I talk about Leavenworth is I say it's a hidden gem. People are friendly, and it's very diverse, and it has the best food. Any type of food you want, we have it, except for gyro meat. We need a gyro place. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's right. That's good. No, we, that's some good feedback. Appreciate that, Sherry. <laughs> we used to have good feedback. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, that, yeah, that's very good. Thank you very much okay, for that. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work on this and <laughs> okay. uh, send it back out to kind of, um, good. as a round uh, robin, it's, we'll have it as a Google Doc that you guys can kind of oh, go in good. and okay. edit, and then we'll send like it back out um, with a final version. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. I think we've made a good deal of progress. Uh, any hey, other? Good job, everyone. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> that's great. So, any other comments from commissioners or, or no. um, Claude? Anything from you? No, other than I think Mark Commissioner Price was kind of hitting something. I think it's so important. Just if you look at something, it ought to be simple. Like, let's go back to Army, keep it simple, stupid concept. And he kind of the point he was saying, I agree with this kind of live here, work here, retire here. In other words, it, it kind of simple, but it. it if you live here, we're already saying things. If you live here, what's going to things that you're going to be entitled to? It's going to be provided to you. If you work here, we've alluded to that yeah. retirement resources and the metro area and everything else here. I think those three things include. It's simple, but I think you need something simple in addition to this mission. Mission same is pretty lengthy by nature, but I think you need something simple to start with that he was alluding to. I, I I like what Mark is saying. I see it more. I mean, and I'll say that I see it, that more as a mission statement as opposed I to a vision. Too. Now, I, yeah. I I'm happy with it as far as like a yeah. mission statement, but right. in terms of a vision, I, I kind of like what we've been discussing here in the last half an hour or so. so a vision but, a vision is a mission statement is very short and concise. Right. A vision is when you see like it like says that. at the top in 2030, this is what I close my eyes yeah, and right. see. Right. Exactly. And so it is more descriptive. Mm -hmm. Visionary. <laughs> Visionary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, since we kind of talked about right. the vision, do you want to go to the trends next? Sure. Sure. Okay. And do I do that, or is somebody else there shall begin to do it? Uh, do we had the generations? You're going to talk yes. about those. Oh, I'm sorry, the generations. That's right. Sure. Do that next. Um, so yes. We'll put it up. We, we've we've got it. We'll put it up for you, and then um, toggle through it. Okay. Do I just go ahead and give it to Ted? Uh, there we go. All right, somebody else knows what to do. There we go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, oh, I know. Um, we just kind of easier. talked a little know, bit about the diversity this, yeah. of the community and um, all different age groups that um, currently are living here but also are attracted to your community. And so, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, trends and things that are happening in terms of demographics, and uh, I'm going to describe some of the generations. And I think that's going to be important uh, for your final exercise today, which is Shelby's going to work with you on um, deciding which um, trends that are out there are um, higher priority for your community to consider as we um, kind of think back to what we want for a vision and what we want to achieve and what some of those external um, impacts are. And so um, the first mega trend kind of to talk about in terms of demographics is that America's population is becoming younger on one end and it's becoming older on the other end and it's becoming much more culturally diverse. And I'm going to kind of talk about this trend um, and kind of divide it up and describe it by the different generations that we have. But um, this will be a pretty big impact in terms of your community over the next 10 years. Um, because um, you do have a, uh, a your population is um, relatively um, is a relatively young population. You do have uh, people that are in uh, their 55 and over, but the majority of 
your folks that live in your community are under the age of 54. And um, probably it will continue to be that way just because of the types of jobs that you have available in your community, but also because you are a family friendly community. And then in terms of um, diversity, your, uh, your uh, community is more diverse um, than many other um, cities um, across the state of Kansas and even in the metro area. You can go to the next slide, sorry. You can go back to two if you don't mind. So um, you are expected to um, have a population growth um, that recently Frank Link with Mid-American Regional Council presented updated um, at 2040 Outlook. And um, the region will grow and as well as Leavenworth is expected to grow and even the county as well. And um, one of the things I think that's kind of interesting about your community is you have, usually it's about a 50-50 split, but you do have more males than females um, in um, Leavenworth. So if you're a single female, that might be a good thing for you. Uh, if you're 2,000 of them are at 13th and Metropolitan. Huh? <laughs> and they count in the Maybe census. not. <laughs> okay, you can go to the next slide. They are counting. Yeah, they are. There we go. So by 2020 or 2045 um, in the United States, um, the whites will be and might will no longer be the majority. We'll have a minority um, majority. The U.S. minority population today is about 30 percent. And by 2045, it's going to exceed 50 percent. Um, Latinx and Asian populations will triple in the U.S. over the next um, uh, several decades. And one million immigrants per year over the next 40 years will move to the U.S. Um, uh, I think oftentimes uh, because of just how, what we've heard in the news and kind of uh, that sort of thing, we think of immigrants um, in our communities as um, low, wage work, low wage workers, but immigrants um, over the next 40 years will be, um, be coming to the U.S. because they're highly skilled, educated, and they'll be coming here for health care and technology jobs. Also by 2050, 40% of children under the age of five will be Latinx in the United States. And today that number is 5%. So going from 5% to 40%, which is a pretty big wow. jump. And so um, this is a, um, a really cool chart over here. I was born in 1965. So that, was, uh, that goes from 1965 <coughs> to 2065. And it really shows the makeup and how that's, that, um, uh, the ethnic um, changes and um, racial changes in the um, in the United States um, have really changed over the past um, 50 years and will continue to have that trend. Yeah, that is a nice chart. Did you, did you I mean, I, I know you guys put it together, but it, it, it does, it is a nice snapshot just looking at the one chart there. Terms of yeah, the this trends. is from the, uh, the Pew Research Center. Okay. And a lot of our slides come from um, the Brookings Institute, or their, uh, we compile all this information, but a lot of our graphics come from Brookings Institute and the okay. Pew Research Center. Okay, thank you. So you can go to the next slide. You guys might see the next slide. Okay, here we go. So how will that impact um, Leavenworth over the next 10 years, this generational trend? Um, your um, and uh, recently, or I just told you about how your age is less diverse in terms of um, the number of different age groups and categories within that uh, people within those categories than the national average. But you're very close in age, uh, median age, which is not the average. It's kind of a, you have the same amount above as you do below. Um, 35 <laughs> is the median age in um, Leavenworth, and the median age in Kansas City is 36. And our Kansas is 36, and the metro area is 37. Um, so this also shows kind of your population growth um, from 1960 to 1990. So in the 90s, kind of when the housing boom was underway, uh, you experienced um, a large increase in um, housing population, and that um, leveled off in the 2000s. And then, of course, really you didn't have a big impact after the um, 20, uh, 2008 housing crisis kind of was, remained the same and then is on a slight upward trend. Hmm. Go to the next slide. I wonder how our command and general staff college affected that for here. Or is that America? That's America. Oh, that was the, that was the Leavenworth, um, your population. So, okay. um, 
If you want to go to the next slide, I don't know what happened to the slides. Are gone. Oh, here we go. America is aging. So I'm now going to kind of go through the different generations. And uh, some of you may be able to relate to some of the things that are in these generations. Um, others might not sound like you individually, but um, it's um, we've taken a lot of this from market research and um, studies of the um, economic patterns and social patterns of people within certain generations. And if you think about it, the way that they used to kind of um, identify generations was every 30 years, um, that would be considered a generation. But because of changes in technology, um, what is happening now is generations are becoming shorter and shorter um, timeframes because technology is changing the preferences and the market habits of each generation. So you'll kind of see how these um, change over time. But the silent generation, this is my parents, um, they're called the builders. Um, they are the fastest growing age demographic, um, age 85 and up, and they are also the wealthiest generation. They're savers, they like to save. A lot of them were born during the depression, and so um, their uh, parents lived through the depression and kind of instilled that saving um, um, on them as well. Um, baby boomers, a lot of you might be baby boomers in the crowd there. Um, you're born between 1945 and 1965. Um, baby boomers um, are a force to be reckoned with. They uh, really are um, folks that are uh, looking for kind of a different thing. They're looking into the retirement or they're in the retirement age now. Um, they're looking for places that they can stay in terms of aging in their own home, or they're looking to um, sell maybe their family home and move into something that's a little bit more walkable, that might have restaurants and shops nearby or surf services nearby, more walkable. Um, one of the negative things about this trend of baby boomers kind of um, moving and shifting from home ownership to rental is they're really driving up the cost of rental property because um, they can afford a nicer, more, um, with more amenities, uh, rental property. And so some folks that are maybe younger are having trouble kind of keeping up with the baby boomers in terms of how much they can spend on, um, on housing. And then uh, baby boomers are the biggest uh, spenders of all the groups that I'm going to talk to you about today on consumer goods and services. And this is kind of an interesting um, thought in terms of how America is aging. By the year 2030, nearly 20% of the U.S. will be over the age of 65. And so that's, um, that is a, a, big, a big change. Um, also, there's over a million um, people that are over the age of 100, um, uh, or there will be by the 2050. So that's, um, that is a very big number. And then um, baby boomers, as I said, they're big spenders. They control 70% of consumer spending. And so you'll see that um, they are highly targeted by um, cities in terms of trying to bring them to them to retire, uh, but also um, by um, uh, retailers and others. So go to the next slide, please. This is the best generation. This is my <laughs> generation X. Um, <laughs> um, I was born in 1965 in December, so my parents got to deduct me for, from their taxes that year and didn't have to pay much for me, so that's great. That's my claim to fame, as my dad says. Um, uh, we, this generation is called large and, in, or char, large and in charge. We have a, or in charge, but not large. It is not a very big um, generation. Mm -hmm. But um, they're the folks that are influential in the workplace right now, and they're clashing with other generations. They um, have very different um, ideas, wants, and needs than um, many of the other generations I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, Generation Xers are um, entrepreneurs. 55% uh, of the startups around the U.S. were founded by Generation Xers. Um, we love our homes, where 82% of us are homeowners, and we're really kind of instilled upon us is that is a way to build wealth. And so during the housing crisis of 2008, that really impacted a lot of Generation Xers because they were building their wealth through um, homeownership. 
Um, Generation X generates 31% of the total income in the U.S., but they only represent about a quarter of the population. And so they really are the income earners right now of um, all the generations combined. And this one is kind of surprising to me, but maybe not. Um, we spend more time on social media than millennials do. And um, that is why I think um, so many um, organizations really um, target us in terms of um, convenience of shopping and um, that use social media to drive us to make purchases. So the next one is the dreaded millennials. <laughs> Uh, I say that because I have a lot of millennials in my organization and we like to give each other trouble. But they were born between 1981 and 1996. Um, one of the things that's really uh, troubling for them right now is they have, have a lot of student debt and wages have stagnated and now we're going into a recession. So they've had a really difficult time building wealth over the years. And that's partially why only half of them are homeowners and half of them rent, but it's also a preference. And um, they really have spread the urban lifestyles to the suburban um, communities. So for example, I don't know how many of you have been to city center or really if you've been to the legends, um, a lot of that is kind of that urban lifestyle in the middle of a suburban or even kind of a, a county area, county developed area. Um, this generation is the most educated generation to date. Um, it is the most diverse. It is the last generation that we'll have that is majority white. A lot of them are postponing marriage and children, probably because they're having difficulty building wealth and establishing themselves okay. because of their student loan debts and kind of um, since they've been in the workforce, um, wages have stagnated. Um, and they have, but they do have, a, um, with the resources that they have, they spend them on a lot different types of things than we do. They love to travel. Um, they love to identify themselves as um, um, uh, pet owners. 57% um, of millennials have pets. And so that's why that's one of the biggest industries in the world is um, pet, um, pet supplies. We all have pets. Yeah, we do. Go to the next one, if you would. Oh, and the millennials are a quarter of the world's population. Millennials um, were when, oh, go to, I'm sorry, go back to this one. This is another little tidbit about um, millennials. Millennials touch their smartphones 45 times a day on average. Uh, five out of six connect with companies on social media. And so really for these folks, Instagram um, is really a way to reach them. Um, and that um, they're willing to share their information in exchange for any kind of incentive in general um, um, to companies. And where my generation would be like, whoa, they want my personal information. Right. They're just right. like, yeah, that sounds great. As long as I can get a coupon to <laughs> Go to the next one. This is one that the, probably the generation that's annoying me the most right now. My son is a Generation Z. He's 22. He was born, he was born after 1996. Um, they're um, a very interesting, um, they're very different than Generation uh, Y or the Millennials. Um, they are already majority minority. They're very tech savvy. Um, the reason that this Generation Z was placed kind of in close proximity um, to, you know, Generation Y is not a very wide span in terms of their generation. It's because they were born um, around the time that the internet was invented or became more widespread. And so they're very tech savvy. They've never lived without the internet. Um, I can guarantee you that this next stat is correct. Eight second attention span, at least for my son. Um, they are the largest generation. And so they really do have a lot of um, buying power and will be super important in this next this next election. Um, should they get out and vote, they can outvote the baby boomers just due to, strictly due to numbers. Um, and they'll be the most uh, diverse ever with a half racial or ethnic minorities and one in four of Generation Z or Latinx in the United States. The next one. Um, Gen Z, as I said, is not like um, Gen Y. Um, they will be the most educated, but they're very concerned about debt. So they're looking at different ways to educate themselves. 
they're not really, um, a lot of them are not going to be going to four-year colleges right out of high school. They'll be do, doing more community college and even um, more uh, kind of like online skill building types of um, education so that they'll learn technical skills, computer skills, and they'll do so without a four-year degree. Um, they value job security over job hopping, which is great for employers. Um, they love uh, brick and mortar stores, but they like that integrated with an online um, experience. And so you're going to see more of the Gen Z people liking what they call showrooms, where they you go and maybe you try something on and you check it out, but you buy it online or you buy it online. Uh, I'm sorry, my dog. <laughs> you pick it up. Um, you go pick it up and um, at the store. And COVID has really expanded that for all of us. And when Gen Z grows up, they'll make up 40% of U.S. consumers. Uh, they love to save money. Um, they're very concerned about money uh, and having that wealth over time. And they um, prefer urban living, but will likely be homeowners more than um, Gen, Gen Y or millennials. That's interesting. In the next slide, please. So um, this will really change your workforce over time. 72% of high school students want to start a business someday. So they're going to be very entrepreneurial, likely because their parents are Gen Xers and they're entrepreneurs. Um, they would rather be an entrepreneur than employee. They love to invest their money and they're socially conscious when they do. They really think about who they invest their money in and they want to see that um, they're giving back to the community um, when they spend their money at um, places. And they value their identity and the identity of where they live, and they value diversity. Go to the next slide. The next one, it is Shelby's little son. He is an alpha. They're the most transformative generation. Again, um, a smaller uh, generation um, um, uh, span there. Um, they were born uh, after 2010, and in 2010 was when the iPad was invented. <clears throat> they um, no longer look at technology as something that they have to learn. It's deeply integrated into their everyday life. Shelby talks about how her son um, calls Alexa and says, Alexa, um, can you tell me what the weather's going to be today so he knows what to wear and he yeah. is in kindergarten. Yeah. Um, they'll be the most um, formally educated generation ever. They'll be globally the wealthiest generation ever. And then there's a high share of the um, uh, generation alpha that will be foreign born themselves, uh, representing more countries around the world than in previous generations. <laughs> and um, the number of generation alpha born globally each week is 2.5 million. Wow. That's interesting. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that is all of my slides on the generation. So as you're thinking about your That's trends fascinating. today, I want you to think about not just how old these generations are and what their preferences are today, but um, what their preferences will be <clears throat> 10, 20, and even um, 30 years from now. Because if you look around Leavenworth, um, so much of what was built was built so long ago. So the things that you're thinking about in your comprehensive plan that you're building for these generations today will continue to be around during their lifespan. So you need to think about how their uh, preferences may change over time and how the preferences of those generations will change Leavenworth over time. And so with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Shelby, unless anyone has any questions about what I just Talked about. Yeah. Great job. Good job. Really good. Yeah. There are a lot of insights there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I think it's good to kind of think about that before you start um, planning your community because we're not really planning it for ourselves. We're planning it for future generations, right. and they're very different than we are. So, you know, on that Generation Alpha, one of your bullets was in terms of kind of, um, and then I guess through immigration would be, you know, people of who were born in a foreign country coming here for work and, and living. And I, I think Commissioner Batter had mentioned that. I think that is a strength of the city of Leavenworth, and not, not only with Absolutely. Fort Leavenworth, but yeah. actually the city itself. In mm -hmm. the last few years, I run into some, to some people not associated with the military who mm -hmm. are from foreign countries, and, and they're just working here. So I, I think mm -hmm. there's, some, there's some potential there to... Uh, you know, increase our population numbers and, and, and increase our quality of life within the city. Right, and the people that you have um, 
have, that live in Leavenworth, a lot of folks that live there have lived around the world and their expectations in terms of um, amenities are quite different than your competitors in other communities in the metropolitan area because of that That's diversity. True. And also, as one of your commissioners talked about, um, the friendliness of your community and how people feel welcomed um, is not something that, you know, really um, folks that have that um, international experience in terms of uh, military service and that sort of things have felt in other areas and so that's kind of what yeah. we've been hearing from yeah. folks is the friendliness of Leavenworth keeps people there and they do want to retire <coughs> or raise their family. Good. Thank you. That's that's really a good right. rundown. I learned a lot. I think so. That's really good. Yeah. Do we have what's the next? Do we have what's next? So so I will lead you all through the next activity. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is um, we've come up with um, looked at national trends and then associated them, um, given some back information on some of them um, with data that we've found for Leavenworth. Um, some of them are just in general national trends that we're starting to see. So what we're going to do is um, sort those out and look at what the uh, probability of that trend happening nationally is. And then looking at the two-part question of it is, so how likely is that trend to happen? And then if so, what is the impact of it on Leavenworth? And so I have a board over here, and I'll give each of you trend cards. And those of you online, um, the board that I'll be showing everyone and we'll be working with was in the second page of the, the agenda handout. Um, but so I'll, I'll separate up the cards for you, and what I'll have you all do is one at a time, we'll go through, have you read one out loud. You guys will discuss for um, just a brief little bit, and then identify where you want to place it on the board. Um, and so we'll just go from there. And like I said, I have about 40 of them. I'm in the interest of time. I know we probably won't get through all of them, but um, you know, some of them can generate like heavier discussion or anything like that. But um, you know, the exercise isn't meant to have long, lengthy conversations about each trend. It's just more so of you know, is this likely, and what will the impact be on Leavenworth? Is it high, low? Is it in between? So we'll go from there. So. Let me grab those. We don't have one. I don't know. So I'll just place the board here so you all can see it. But so think of it as an X, Y axis. So the probability, this is a lower probability, higher probability for this quadrant. Uh, lower impact to high impact. So then anything that you really feel is up. High priority um, for Leavenworth would go in quadrant four, low priority two, um, and then anything in between based on a probability and impact would go in the other one. Okay. Do you mind grabbing the microphone? Oh, right there. Sure. So, this is for our community as a whole. I will. I don't know. Let's see what she says. Pass a stack of these around to everyone. This is for the city as a whole? As city as a whole. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um, just read your first card out loud, um, and then we'll go around the room just as we discuss, and then I'll take it back and just put it up on the board. Read the entire card? Uh-huh. Do you want to start? Go ahead. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Sure. Go ahead. go ahead. My card, housing values and affordability. Median home value in Leavenworth is... Uh, Medium sale price two hundred twenty six thousand. Medium value one hundred fifty nine thousand. Average cost of new home four hundred eleven thousand. So housing values and affordability. You know, my comment on that is that I, I'm a good example of that one. But I mean, people I've managed rental properties in town. So having affordable housing in this community is a nice house here is probably a hundred thousand less than the park area. Mm -hmm. Is my first observation. So I think that is critical that to have that a decent three-bedroom or two-bedroom 
house for 200 some thousand people, I think, can afford it here. I think it's extremely important that we have homes that are in that price range versus 300 some thousand. It <laughs> gives affordability and encourages people to move here and stay here. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that's critical. So that would go in the upper right? Upper right. Upper right. Upper yep. right. If everyone's in agreement with that, then we'll. Yeah. That was a good discussion, Claude. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, this is Sherry Whitson. I'd also say that if we're looking into the future and we're looking at what's the generation alpha, did you say they were the ones that are more prone to probably purchasing homes? Um, mm -hmm. So maybe at that point, you know, we need to think about that as well. You know, because uh, millennials probably aren't and wise aren't. So aren't we supposed to factor this into our decision making? Yes. Yes, we, we definitely, I mean, we want to think of all the generations um, across the board, but especially for looking to the future, mm -hmm. you really want to take into consideration the uh, gen, gen um, well, anything from millennial on, um, but especially the alphas, because they will be the ones who in 2040, I mean, if you think about it, in 2040, my son will be um, graduating college so you know going out into the workforce um so all the alphas yeah. will be doing that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that's good okay thank you okay here we go, go ahead, Kim. okay this is quality of life transit and trails casey metro quality of life survey participants rank transit as most desired service being selected by 24 percent of residents twice as high a share as trails, the next most sought after amenity. The level of support for additional transit was highest for middle-aged and older adults. For whites, for those with high incomes, and for those with high levels of education. 50% of residents selected at least one of a group of six amenities, dealing with being outdoors and uh, recreating re Recreating, including trails, as most important. So, so we're looking at that the the trend here is that um, individuals are indicating that transit's important and trails are important, and any recreational activities outside. Um, so, you know, it, if this continues to a trend in the the metro region. Um, and impacts your community, how important is that for you all? I think it's very important, especially, I mean, even now with the, um, I mean, we have limited trails and everything, but especially with what's going on yeah. and everything, people are uh, bike riding mm -hmm. and doing a lot of outdoor yeah. activities, and even with our parks is that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have um, limited transportation, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I would agree that... Um, Because I think some of those those habits that people are hopefully their habits are, are getting into in terms of a lot more of the exercise, use, using maybe using the cars a little bit less because you're not having that wanting to go down maybe to the Legends or Kansas City, um, you know, mm -hmm. Kansas City, Missouri as much as much as we have in the past. <clears throat> I think some of that's going to continue. Um, yeah, like and, a walkable community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. So. Okay. Okay. Rapid delivery. Order at 11, it's at your door the next morning. Logistics, infrastructure, technology, and, and changing delivery systems are satisfying the shopping public that wants to get things right away. This means developing large and efficient modern warehouses that can accommodate automation and robotics. What's next? Smart lockers in neighborhood fulfillment centers and in residential blocks to allow for rapid and secure delivery and pickup or drone delivery. With delivery becoming a necessity to compete, retailers are examining how their real estate plays into the delivery supply chain. There will need to be warehouse space in close proximity to downtowns and urban areas to answer the demand for all the various delivery services. Metropolitan areas need to be aware of the logistical implications these services have for industrial and storage areas and road capacity. Well, those are all big... Uh, <laughs> infrastructure <laughs> and yeah. and uh, you know I mean I think industrial I mean I do think today. of our industrial park in terms or business of park yeah and um, you know part of that I mean it's a great industrial park part of that's in terms of 
company's willingness to um, relocate or, or build there initially. I think are, 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 the, are the roads um, and proximity to uh, what? Yeah, I-70 and I-45. Yeah, right. but, I, but I do think it's certainly a trend that's uh, getting stronger and stronger. And I mean, it's a little bit at odds with what we'd like to see mm -hmm. as far as our downtown, right? So there's a little bit of a, I don't know, an, an aspect of that that's a threat, I think, but for, the, for our downtown. I'll, I'll take a little bit of an opposite view. I see that as a low priority for Leavenworth because I think a lot of that already exists with the Amazons and everything else. I mean, it, it's part of life. I don't think that many of the shoppers that go downtown to the shops expect, you know, drone delivery. They they like that hands-on feel to shop in a local shop. While if they're buying a pair of Levi's, you can go on the internet and they'll show up, you know, the next day at your front door, and that's fine. Uh, it just agree. depends what you're shopping for. Yeah, yeah. I agree. That. Yeah, it's an it's experience. Better. Yeah, yeah. They are downtown. They go down. The people who shop there go down for the experience, mm -hmm. tactile, for the uniqueness, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, to make us make every store in this town a, another Amazon. Mm -hmm. I, I think be very difficult since Amazon already exists, and Amazon will enhance, enhance. You know, they're mm -hmm. doing, and it would be boring. It, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. We have unique shops in that. Yeah. And, you know. and it could take away from the uniqueness of your uh, downtown yeah. because you're yeah. you're going to want to drive people to the downtown to also then just patron other smaller businesses and just enjoy the Have the outside amenities and things like that. So mm -hmm. there are factors to consider there too. So. But I would agree with the, the lower probability. Lower. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's fine. Lower yeah, lower probability. Lower, end, yeah, yeah. lower mm -hmm. left quadrant. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, next. KC region is getting warmer with more intense rains. Kansas City Metro can expect to become wetter and warmer. Average rainfall is expected to increase roughly 1.5 inches by 2060. And average temperatures are on track to increase 4 degrees Fahrenheit by the same year. Wow. wow. Heat waves are projected to increase in, on average by 5 degrees Fahrenheit by mid-century. The number of hot days when temperatures exceed 105 Fahrenheit is projected to increase in frequency from less than once per year to more than five times per year by mid-century. So, and then it's got a climate outlook. Midwest temperature change by mid-century, um, 20 plus more days over 95 degrees, concentrated rainfall events. Increased length of consecutive dry days in summer. So, this is the climate the climate crisis that uh, yeah. we are it's part a, of in terms it's of the probability. Yeah, yeah the probability <laughs> is it very is high, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, impact is impact. It is high. Yeah, it's high too. there's, there's yeah. no question about that. <laughs> Where that goes? Number four it is. <laughs> Let me ask a question. Uh, I agree that the impact is very high, the probability is very high. Quadrants one and three. How does it fit in four? I mean, what can we as a community do to change it? I think we as the global community can, but I don't know what we as Leavenworth can do. I think it's how do we make it our high priority? priority? It's uh, I'm, be so maybe I'm just not understanding. So you're su suggesting the prob it would be lower, like um, the the probability. I guess you're the saying probability the probability is very high. The impact, impact is very high. It needs to be in one yeah. and not four. Yeah, I, that's a good point. Yeah. I think that's being a little contrarian, yeah. but that's fine. Yeah. It needs to be in one and not one. four. Okay. High probability. Yeah. yeah. And the impact's high too. So that's an impact. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yes. and that's something that we've been actually looking at, um, a few of us were looking at today, is just some of the data and research on air quality and um, just your emissions um, here in Leavenworth specifically and looking at how those have fluctuated over the years. That's so uh, that's okay. something that you, you all might see here um, just in the future with some of the goals and objectives is that is something that we've been looking at. Good. Okay, mine, excuse me, says smart cities technology will reduce overall costs plus improve quality of life. A smart city incorporates information and communication technologies to enhance the quality and performance of urban services such as energy, transportation, and utilities 
in order to reduce resource consumption, waste, and overall costs. Digital applications are starting to also improve some key quality of life indicators by 10 to 30 percent. Numbers that translate into lives saved, fewer crime incidents, shorter commutes, a reduced health burden, and carbon emissions averted. Uh, how many smart cities are there in the, you know, what are considered smart cities in the world? I, I'm, I know there's some mm -hmm. pockets of them. The biggest one in the world might be in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a good question. I'm not sure off the top of my head um, how many... How many there are? What's, what's kind of the basic definition of a smart city? What is, what is, what is it? It so incorporates information, communication technologies to enhance the quality and performance. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it, it's probably going to be things like uh, Wi-Fi on every light post. Right. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, things things built into your um, infrastructure system, your lighting, your your street lights, your yep. you know signals. Um, well, also, just within the the streets themselves, they're starting to find that there's way to do um, various reflectors and you know pavement paintings and things like that. I think that's an opportunity for the city of Leavenworth. Mm -hmm. I think the probability may be low, but maybe the impact high. You know that yeah. bottom right hand um, quadrant. Uh, I mean, that's just my initial gut feeling, but. Um, Sorry. That'd be nice if we could have some, you know, some pilot programs. Some entrepreneurs come in here and do some pilot programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Uh, <clears throat> I think as public works further develops mm -hmm. into the next decade and continues to grow, you will all you will see this in all cities. I mean, in the last 15 years, I, our biggest change was probably going to what LED lights. Mm -hmm. When we first went there, that was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's just kind of expected. Uh, all these things will be, it'll just be expected, be just like go back 150 years ago, you couldn't turn on the faucet and get, get some water. Uh, so, yeah, those will become expectations of every, every city. Well, I think so, over the next 10 years, that's where I would put it, but yeah. I mean, unless that's you fine. Know, yeah. other commissioners feel otherwise. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd like it to be a higher pro probability, but I think it's for the next 10 years probably there. In that quadrant. Uh, pandemic and technology change, transportation needs. In the KC Metro, people are willing to drive far distance uh, to work because our roadway network is relatively uncongested. More companies may move to employees working at home. Public transportation may change due to the need of social distance. People want to be healthier, so they want to walk or, or ride a bike. Uh, Leavenworth mean travel time to work is 7.3 minutes. National average time is 26.6 minutes. <laughs> wow. Uh, two point, how residents commute to work in Leavenworth? 2.3% walks, uh, works at home, 10.5% uh, carpool, 0.4% uh, public transportation, 2.6% uh, walk, and 26 is other. Hitchhike. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Joanne? I said hitchhike. New generations. They don't. Well, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. We're definitely moving in that direction, uh, especially now. And but I would put it. I'm suggesting maybe two point five. <laughs> no, about a three. That's that's my take on it. Okay. Yeah. Any other comment suggestions? I think uh, one number that might be a little bit low is the work at home. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think gonna so grow too. geometrically. Correct, yeah. Especially yeah. there's gonna be a glut of commercial real estate as yeah. a result of this yeah. pandemic. People are gonna they can realize we don't need all these people in the office, they can do it just as well yeah. at home. Yeah. Because of technology. Yeah. yeah. That or we are fighting um just because we are actually currently looking at relocating our office, um, just that for commercial real estate, if it isn't becoming more vacant, um, people are going to be looking for at least larger spaces so that they can space out um, is one, one trend that um, we've been hearing about. But um, yes, the, the work from home aspect of it is definitely going to increase. So, so which quadrant do we think it belongs in? Mm -hmm. I suggested three. I okay. think three All is right. good. Higher impact and low in, low priority. Okay. Yep. Good job, Commissioner Wilson. <coughs> Are we
we're going to let our um, planning commission folks on the oh, line? Oh, Lord. They, <laughs> they don't have any cards, any okay. cards okay. unfortunately, okay. To, Call us next. to read. But, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, Call us but feel oh, free to jump in at any point in time in yeah, the sure. discussion. Yeah. So. I feel like this was tailor-made for a city manager. <laughs> Aging infrastructure. <laughs> Every three years, the American Society for Civil Engineers develops a grade card for infrastructure in Kansas. It's part of a national effort to raise awareness about the condition and needs for infrastructure investment. The grade card recently released gave Kansas infrastructure overall a C, which means mediocre requiring attention. However, the good news is that that's better than the national average, which is a D+. The bad news is that it hasn't improved over the last several rating cycles, and in some categories, it has declined. I would say that the biggest challenge is aging infrastructure limiting your ability to um, grow. Um, the resources and attention required and the attention given to aging infrastructure um, becoming an unnecessary impediment to being able to expand, grow, develop, um, and do anything else, sort of like the thing that keeps weighting you down. Um, it's not going anywhere. We have the oldest infrastructure in the state of Kansas, as you've heard me say over and over, and a true awareness and appreciation for that um, is necessary to do anything going forward. It has a, a probability off the charts and an I impact probably. off the charts, <laughs> in my opinion. So the probability would be um, the top, in up, up at quadrant the top. one? Yeah, one. Mm -hmm. Clear up at the top. And then impact is the four, right? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's what I would argue that it top, needs to be in right four. Quadrant, yeah. mm -hmm. I agree. And I think some of the things that, uh, you know, the the city staff and the city manager are doing, like that that grant or, you know, what's coming from um, KDOT right. for the Metropolitan, I mean, those are the type of things we, we've got to, you know, try to investigate and try to do the best we can. and incrementally and improve the best we can in terms of our infrastructure. If I just mentioned that, I know it's not impacting where right. we're putting the card, but I think those are the type of, some of the strategies that we need to continue to, to deal with this challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we, we've gone through one round. I know there's plenty of cards, but I, I want to be respectful of your time, so I didn't know if you guys wanted to go through one more round of them, and then we can... In for the evening, and then the rest of them I can send out yeah. as a. Okay. I think yeah. we can go. Yeah, through. Well, one more. I one think more. We can go through one more. I think okay. We're up there. Um, okay. And then yeah, the rest of them I can send out as a um, survey, and what I'll do is just have you um, select which quadrant it would go in, and then I'll take the majority oh, yeah. um, answers, and then send that back out, and just we'll have a discussion around that also. Okay. okay. So. You'd like to start? Uh, more people commute out from Leavenworth. I want to start with Commissioner Preissinger's comment that with people with the recession, I mean, everything going on with COVID, people, business are finding out they don't need to have that many people working businesses. They're, they're working from their home. There's going to be this space available. Uh, as the number of small businesses decline and the economy falls into a recession, will more people continue to commute outside of Leavenworth? So the issue is commuting. I had a friend said, if you live close to Metropolitan, had to go from Metropolitan to Eisenhower, it's about 23 stoplights there and lights. It takes a long time to get through Leavenworth. But we know we have 20th Street, an incredible bypass around Leavenworth. So the issue is commuting. So I know a lot of people work, certain a lot of my friends work in the Kansas City area, and it's convenient depending on where you live mm -hmm. to get out of Leavenworth, depending on where you live, though. And I think this commuting is a lot of people... You know, Lansing has an advantage there with Leavenworth on the situation, but I think commuting is important, but I can only say that if we're commuting, that we need that, that 20th Street we've done, and everything from that point up to around Metropolitan or Eisenhower, and all the expansion work done there has really helped people commute and get around Leavenworth faster. It's probably a valid issue, but I'm going back to Commissioner Price's comment. I think it's not going to be a greatest issue in the future with people reassessing how many people do we truly need to be in a building and how many people can do the same function at home. So I don't think this is a major issue for Leavenworth because we're a historical city. I mean, because of the nature of our zoning, because of the nature of who we are, other than I'm just using that 20th Street bypass, that it's not easy to get through Leavenworth unless you live in the right location. But I don't say this being a major issue of commuting, a community. It's, I see its importance, but I'm not certain of, of what we can do about it with commuting. People are saying, 
they're leaving Leavenworth, going to work somewhere. We know that somewhere would be Kansas City area airport or the metro area. So how important is that to Leavenworth, that commuting ability? If we're talking about personal commuting, uh, uh, that's a good point. More and more people will be working at home. Fewer mm -hmm. people will be driving to Kansas City to work. There still will be those. But the biggest impediment in commuting is attracting businesses, for example, the new uh, business park right. and the current business park. One of the questions every business comes in that produces product is, how quickly can I get this to my customer? And the real question is, how close are you to I-29 or I-70? Right. And, you know, we could say we're eight miles from I-70, but they come up and drive it, and there's nine stoplights there, right. and you got a truck, 53-footer, going, stopping and going, and pushing, making K-7, mm -hmm. the highway that it's supposed to be, it's 65 miles an hour down to I-70, and not a stop and go like Metcalf Avenue now is in uh, Kansas City, hurts us in recruiting. So, and that's not necessarily what... We in Leavenworth can correct, but we in Leavenworth can lobby with the state to follow the master plan that they had for K-7 to make that a highway into uh, I-70. And of course, other ones, we've worked with our partners a little bit in Missouri and always come up short on making uh, the road going across the bridge over to I-29, that eight miles to I-29, making that four lane. And so then we have access Canada and then I-70 all the way out to California very quickly. We'd be more uh, attractive to to businesses. It probably doesn't make that big a difference to people deciding to live here. But mm -hmm. um, some employers that produce product, they have to move. I think that could be critical to economic growth for businesses yeah, yeah. deciding to go out to the industrial park or even you know locate uh, downtown. So. Um, that whole K-7 thing, I think they are going forward with uh, the one R cut, which, you know, down there by what, Parallel and uh, K-7? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. What turn. I understand is that some of those <laughs> other intersections that come north to Lansing could, could be a possibility if the, if the county We've commission We've discussed on board. this. Uh, yeah. That's what uh, Mike Port McDonald told me. Yeah. 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 I haven't read the plan yet, but um, that's what he told me. So. Okay. So where do you think that should be, Claude? So lower, lower, but yeah. it, but in, it, lower, but impact is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, what we think low impact too, or higher impact? Was well, it the way you read it? Was it mostly mostly about lower. individuals as opposed to companies? About yeah, I'm looking at it for commuting. When I'm thinking commuting, I'm thinking individuals versus yeah, okay. people versus yeah. person. Okay, it's, it's it's in terms of the commuter itself. Okay, so. then low two, yeah, okay. right. Okay, I think so. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Already? Okay. My turn. Okay. The Internet of Things and Big Data. The Internet of Things, Alexa, find my phone, start my washer, turn down the thermostat, etc., is exploding and collecting data on everything we do. In 2016, there were more than 4.7 billion things connected to the Internet. Fast forward to 2021. The market will increase to nearly 11.6 billion, not just connected to the internet, but connected to each other. With the ability to lower costs and generate life-changing insights, big data offers a tremendous amount of value to local governments. As information is collected, municipalities of any size can make data-backed decisions that reduce crime, lower traffic congestion, and improve the environment and health, among other upgrades. I think so that's high priority. I think high it's high probability. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the impact, if we can leverage it, would be high too, yeah. yes. right? Yes. So I'm thinking yes. uh, quadrant four there. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I think this one is good. Innovative tech is coming to fly over country. Silicon Valley used to be known as the heart of America's technology innovation. It was designed as a geographic area where leading edge anchor institutions and companies cluster and connect with startups, business incubators, and accelerators. But Silicon Valley is becoming too expensive with too much traffic and businesses are moving to all over the U.S., including the Midwest. Innovators are looking for suburbs that are affordable but also physically compact transit accessible 
and technically wired offering mixed use of housing, mixed use housing, office, and retail. Well, I think that definitely, I mean, we saw what happened to Denver. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I think the same thing could be happening here because now Denver is getting too expensive. Yeah. And Seattle, you know, some of the others but, right. that have, have gone out from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think, you know, I mean, this is something we need to think about. I, you know, that we have uh, uh, present, present that in our community so that, that they could take advantage of that and, and come here. So, so, so I, I think four. a high, yeah, for high priority, high impact. Okay, next is new models for learning. The driver for education and learning will never disappear. Educational models and delivery will just take different forms. The future of education will focus on access and collaboration. Schools will have both traditional and online only students. E-learning is already widely used where students use technology to access curriculum outside of the traditional classroom. Virtual learning where teachers provide course content through course management applications is in its infancy. Individualized learning technology is leading to a new wave of interest-driven curriculum built around the specific interests of students. Skills will be assessed based on performance and students will learn with tools that adapt to their capabilities. Students will be challenged with harder tasks and questions as levels are achieved. More people visited the library last year than the movie theaters in the U.S. Hmm. Lifelong learning is on the rise as libraries transform themselves. And I would assume because of information technology, right? Yes. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think the probability of this is is high, and and the impact for this community, particularly with our universities and the Command and General Staff College, St. Mary University, KU, the Pioneer uh, Career Center, is um, can be impactful. I think it'd be a four. Wouldn't yeah, I, I think it's I think it's four, four. But unless somebody's going to you know wants to push back on that. But no, I think four. You know, my, just from an academic standpoint, which I'm very involved in the last 40 years, is that the magic words is STEM. And so mm -hmm. I don't know quite how that fits in with vision and how the, what you're looking at here, but it's like it's so important that I heard you say academically, and that's certainly college people and that, but certainly at a lower level oh, yeah. to get something at a lower level, be, have a vision that we have. And maybe I'm not certain of the status of the schools in Lentworth, but I think it'd be great to have a STEM certified, approved, and you're known for that. We mm -hmm. need to have something like that to, for marketability. And no, I, mm -hmm. I would agree. And I, and I think I, even the superintendent of USD 450 would agree that there's room for growth there within the district. And, uh, you know, the district on Fort Leavenworth a little ahead because we have a few more resource, resources to devote to the information technology. But, um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would agree with you. And um, St. Mary, I think, is, uh, has got a, a recent curriculum in the last couple of years that focuses on they STEM as, a, as opposed. In, I think it's in conjunction with developing teachers, but um, so I agree. Okay. Uh, increasing rates of unmanning. Robotics and artificial intelligence means the types of jobs humans do and what computers will do will likely change over time. Essentially, the threat automation the threat automation poses to a job boils down to the tasks required by that job. Routine, predictable, and repeatable tasks are at the highest risk of automation. Tasks that require creativity, analysis, and response to unpredictability are at the lowest risk of being automated. In my opinion, the main uh, employers in Leavenworth are federal government, the Port Leavenworth, USP, VA, and even though some of those jobs are uh, repetitive, uh, I can't see correctional officers at USP, you know, let's do this from home. I think you can have to be on site. Right. At the VA yeah. hospital uh, uh, medical center delivering, uh, uh, you know, uh, medical <coughs> advice, uh, et cetera, services, mm -hmm. uh, has to be one-on-one, -on -one. obviously, over the last couple months. They've done some video things, but uh, I know they prefer to go face-to-face. -face. And Fort Leavenworth, uh, yes, I think you can do it. Some of the teaching online, just like we do with the folks here, they're listening, but I think we all know if we have a group of 30, 20 people together in a room mm -hmm. rather than 20 right. people on Zoom, and you get that biofeedback that, that you want the... Uh, change of ideas. So I think this has, in my opinion, 
we're not a heavy manufacturing town. Yeah. Right. That uh, gone down uh, robotics are yeah. uh, going to take over. It's this is, this takes a lot more human intelligence. Yeah. So human low priority, low, low, low uh, yeah. chance of having okay. cool. impact. In yeah. my opinion. No, it's good. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Commissioner Wilson. Future of the family. 53% of Americans say people will be less likely to get married in 2050. I agree. 46% uh, say people will be less likely to have children in 2050. Today, 71% of parents uh, younger than age 50 say they are unlikely to have more kids. 37% of childless adults say they are unlikely to ever having kids. Mm. Mm. That's true. I think yeah. That's true. You see that with my own kids. The probability is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say, Why huh? Why is that? Well, I think people don't value marriage like they used to, mm -hmm. especially oh, with the younger generation. Well, they're starting yeah. later, so they're, they're yeah, starting later. later. They can't have any children. They're, like, they're, they're, they're starting high. later. The, you know, the, gotcha. the the millennials have the the debt and the stagnant wages um so it's just they can't afford to get married because of health care yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's a probability say, but it's not yeah about to say i don't one. know if that would affect how it would affect us yeah i'm saying it's, well, that, it's a high probability that it's that a very high probability and then the impact that. on uh on us is for a community would be pretty low yeah i say or, low one I think pretty low anyone yeah. else object yeah. shall we do you have any um, I would just consider. I mean, that your your demographic, um, as Sheila pointed out, is that you do have a younger, you know, younger population. Um, so considering them in the future, if they're not having children, you're having less residents. Um, yeah, there's just, just less less people, less people, less revenues. Um, so there is. So the you're suggesting. So the impact I, should I, be high. I think that the impact would be high. Higher, but yeah. I mean, again, that's all that, up to you. It would be to, um, what in the fourth quarter? Number four is that what you're saying? Or um, the the probability is high, oh. but the impact. Um, I'd say about three. Three would be high, so it's a okay. three. I, okay. I would say. Okay. But, I'm fine with that. Yep. That's great. Do we have a consensus? No. I'm just <laughs> 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 you think about, yeah, think about the, the generation which you're talking about, they have the buying power and everything, but if you if if that starts to decrease, then you'll have less less buying power within your community. Yeah, that makes sense. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, thanks for everything. Okay, okay. Paul's turn. Uh, okay, uh, retail is not dead, it's evolving. Online shopping is expanding. Which brick and mortar stores will be around post COVID nineteen? Big Box is integrating both with order online and pick up in store, click and mortar, in store experiences, shareable across social media will grow. Retail showrooming, Gen Z, and baby boomers seek authentic local shops. As a reminder, it's baby boomers 52 to 70, but then you skip two to get to Generation Z, that's age 7 through 21. So obviously the trends of that generation are relevant as you plan for the next 10 years and yep. mm -hmm. attracting. Uh, those professionals and those working uh, young people to stay mm -hmm. here, live here, work mm -hmm. here. So uh, you know, I, 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 probability is is there because we're facing it, and it's a reality of every day. Especially, it's accelerated by a time such as this, where right. um, the amount of orders arriving. You you could sit on K seven, and we talked about mm -hmm. shipping centers. You could sit on K seven and watch the Amazon trucks, those Dodge, go mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, Impact, um, it's important. Um, I think it's maybe somewhere between two and three, like kind of straddling that line. It's definitely something to keep, um, you know, maybe not as important as how they work, not necessarily maybe as how they live, but as an amenity and as a careful consideration. I don't know. I'm certainly open to, to the impact of that. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that sounds good. Between two and three? Kind of just straddle in the line. I don't know if there's a. Can, can they straddle the line or not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they can now, I guess. Right there in the middle. So how about from um, our uh, remote 
uh, folks who are part of the Planning Commission. I think this would be a good time to get any uh, mm -hmm. of, of your feedback, as I think we're going to come to a conclusion here pretty soon for this evening. So, yeah. any anything from uh, Sherry Woodson? Can you do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I think you guys are lining them up just perfect. Um, I think with the pros and the cons, and I, I don't disagree. So this is kind of fun. It's, it's like building a town on a software gaming, you know? <laughs> I know. It's like we're playing a game. Well, thank you for your contributions and your insights this evening, and and as, as you've worked on this on the as part of the Planning Commission. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. This is fun. Anytime. Okay. Uh, how about um, Chris Murphy? Chris, any final uh, thoughts that you have? No, I think you guys are uh, just fine. I'd be interested to get a hold of those cards so I can uh, start looking at them. Um, I think the one thing we kind of didn't go around about is the, uh, you know, we talked about the, the youth and uh, things of that nature. Um, I think the one thing that we need to keep hitting on is trying to keep those youngsters here. Yeah. Um, and like we all know, uh, once they get to a certain age, they disappear. So, um mm -hmm. Just something to think about. <laughs> very good, very good point. Thank you, Chris. How, how about Mike? How about Mike Burke? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I think it's more of a process question. It comes in two parts. I apologize. First part is: is the county and/or the other major cities in the county undertaking the same process that we are? And if the answer is yes. At what point do we link in with them or at least talk to them about our efforts so we don't find ourselves going at cross purposes? Yeah, good point. Thank you. I know that the county um, is doing something similar, although the push of their comprehensive plan was a lot of land use in the south part of the county. Um, there's a yeah. sort of a tendency a lot of times to, you know, the city of Loveworth to kind of um, do their thing. Um, Every city does their comp plan update about every 10 years. I don't know what Lansing's schedule is, um, but we could certainly find out when the other communities in the county intend on um, doing a comprehensive update of their plans and how old they are. That's the best I can do for you right now, Mike. No, that's great. I mean, I think, you know, as we were talking about Highway 7 and the interconnectivity, uh, I mean, I hate to have us go across purposes of what Lansing wants to do or what the county wants to yeah. do. That's kind of why I brought it up. Thank you. Right. Yeah, good yeah, question. Good point. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, what? No, I, okay. I got my point. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was enjoyable. I like doing this sort of thing. And I think it's just about the right amount of time. Okay. Will we have another session like this at some point? Um, we will have another session. We are, um, scheduled for, let's see, August... I believe it's August 16th. I'll have to double check my um, calendar, but um, it's the third week in August. We'll be um, doing uh, goals and objectives. So we'll, we'll have some activities for you all then. Um, and I definitely hope that um, Sheila will be able to join me also so we can be, be in person again and, and do that. Is she um, still on or, or not? She, she had to um, okay, no get off early, but, no, no she, you know. Um, <laughs> no, she, she headed out after okay. um, the, when the trend story started. Um, but like I said, since we didn't get through all of those, I will send out, um, I'll, I'll send a link to Julie and have um, that sent out to you all so that we can finish um, just prioritizing these. And then we'll um, maybe as part of a follow-up with the vision also for vetting of that, we'll also then send out a summary of where all the cards ended up and see if there's any Mm -hmm. um, questions, concerns, or discussion around where those the majority um, placed them. Okay. So, can, okay. can we get a copy of your um, presentation with the descriptions of the different age groups? Would that be the, possible? the generations? Uh huh. Yes. Like a packet. Um, yeah. Oh, just no. Send it to us. Or yeah. send it to us. Yeah. We'll get it. Yeah, digital. Mm -hmm. Send it digital. Yep. Yeah. You got okay. it. That's good. Yeah, and um, so I have. You have a copy of the generations and then all the cards themselves too. So. Okay. Um, you know, on the survey that I send out, it will have the cards, um, a, a picture of them, um, but also you'll be able to reference it in the PDF. Great, too. thank you. And all part of the plan, which may be Winston, I, I have one in an email with all the cards I, that was sent out by Julie. Okay, we'll Did get it to everybody, everybody else. Did everybody else get that? Because I got it. Okay. Oh, I didn't check my mail this afternoon. I don't think the city commissioners did, but probably the planning committee did. 
Yeah, we, I don't think we got we'll it. We'll make sure okay. everybody gets that. Okay. 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 What about, I know this is probably impacted, and I don't want to get ahead of things because there's still a lot of work to be done, but what's kind of the, what are we uh, looking at for a time frame? And, and um, you know, as far as the general public, there were going to be a couple of sessions with the general public. Mm -hmm. So so we were slated to have a large public meeting in late September um, with the general public. So we're just kind of, we're still feeling out how okay. that'll go, um, just okay. gathering sizes and how we want to approach okay. that. If we need to separate it up into multiple sure. small rooms, we can do that. Okay. Um, we will be putting out here shortly um, kiosks. Um, just which won't require you know any any person manning it. Um, it will have either um, paper questionnaires on it huh. or a QR code on it that will allow someone to scan it and then go oh, online yeah, and do cool. that yes, survey. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll we'll get those out. Um, we're Julie and I have been talking about where the appropriate place is to put oh, those, good. just because um, with foot traffic being lower in some areas, we're trying to identify exactly where. Um, you know, those should be placed uh, just with things, okay. not everything being open. Um, and so we will be getting more out that way. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the, the larger public engagement um, meeting that's planned for September, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll figure out what's Good. best for that. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Shelby Ferguson and, uh, or anybody else? If not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. This will conclude our... Um, study session okay, for this evening. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs>